right, so uh, this is not a normal episode of Unlocked. We already did one earlier this week. If you haven't seen it, listen to it on your way home. It's great. Uh, but we thought we'd just have a little fun. Sometimes when we go to conventions, things like that, we like to, uh, how can we involve everyone? What's fun? And so we, we're going we're gonna, to, in a little while, we're going to rank with you guys our top 10 360 games ever. I figure it's, it's the platform's done, it's closed, everybody's got their opinions, so we'll do that. Uh, but first, I want to introduce everybody. I'm Ryan McCaffrey. I've got Dapper Destin Legary to right. my right. <laughs> Marty the Cardigan Ooh. to my left. I thought you were going to continue with the alliteration thing, but I, that, I that wanted works. to. That works. I wanted to. Yeah. Marty the masculine? Uh, <clears throat> Alana Pierce. Hi. I am very much a fan of the current hair color. Thank you. It's looking Thank you. very sharp. Thank you. Uh, glad to have you as always. And special guest, I got to meet him for the first time today. We, we, uh, you used to do this until you, you made it to the big leagues. Writer of uh, the Book of Eli, Star Wars Rogue One, Gary Widow. Welcome, Gary Widow, please. I like how you say, like, you used to do this, but then you were, you're also on Kind of Funny every week, so. I still do Kind <laughs> yeah. of Funny. Yeah. Like, That's a much less professional <laughs> setup than this is, though. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can disprove that tonight. <laughs> Uh, so, let's see here. What do we want to start with? Uh, the best way to go, I think, is it's the beginning of 2018. We've got a lot of games on the way. Should be a good year for Xbox in particular, uh, especially after last year. I mean, 2018's got to look better than 2017 <laughs> did, but it is. No, it really is. Uh, so, I want to go around the table. Uh, Alana, I'm going to start with you, actually. 2018 games, what's something you're super looking forward to? Uh, so I said Sea of Thieves, but they told me that Ryan had already picked that. So I <laughs> so I said Monster Hunter because it's coming out this month. Yep. Uh, no, I'm really excited about Monster Hunter. It's a franchise that I played when it was on 3DS, but it, only with a very, very small group of people. And now that it's coming to both Xbox and PS4, this is something that I think a lot of my friends are going to get into. And if you haven't played Monster Hunter before, it's best with friends, like 100%. Um, I don't know if Casey's still here in the office, but she absolutely loves it. We've basically got a bunch of experts who I think are going to like handhold people in the office through playing Monster Hunter for the first time. Yeah. And it's very exciting and very addictive. So. And it's totally coming out at the right time of that like end of January. There's not a whole lot going on for the next couple months. And so I feel like a ton of us are going to spend February just absorbing this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely been critical of Capcom on this show for, they've been busy with a lot of rehashes and remasters and the back catalog. And this is a huge new, actual new release from them, and it's looking great. Yeah, and I think we'll, yeah, we'll be able to dive into it for a long time. Like, I also, I think my second thing was, can I say Red Dead? <laughs> and Mark again was like, somewhere we picked that. <laughs> <laughs> but I am really excited about Monster Hunter and DBZ, if anyone who doesn't already know. The uh, beta, I think, for DBZ is this weekend. So mm -hmm. Excellent. Let's actually, let's go to Mark. I, I failed. I'm already chalked me up one failure as a host. Didn't introduce Mark Medina, the coordinator of this whole damn thing. Woo! <laughs> You're here because of Mark. Jump, 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 jump. <laughs> Mark the shark. You know what I'm that's, saying? That's, wow. That's, that's, <laughs> oh, I like that. Wow. That sounds great. Bye, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> the gauntlet has been thrown. I took his, uh, uh, took his intro a few episodes ago. <laughs> so, what Mark, are you going to do, right? Uh, Mark, all this looks great. Thanks for putting everything together. Uh, glad, you know, we know Mark is the most beloved panel member on Unlocked. Has a perfect record. Not a single negative comment about Mark yeah, ever. None. None at all. Justifiably. You're the so. only human on the internet who can say that. That's incredible. <laughs> uh, Mark, what are you looking forward to 2018 on Xbox? Uh Okay, so like Alana, I kind of went last, and everybody had picked Red Dead and <laughs> all the good games. No, I'm joking. Uh, I would say uh, Bloodstained uh, because just I'm a huge Sympathy of the Night fan. The game looks really good. I got to play it at E3. I'm really, really excited for that game. I love side scrollers and RPG. I I love it so much, and it's just such a PS1 era game that I just I'm super excited for. So you, you, you played at E3 and you liked it? Yeah. Because yeah. I played it right before E3 and I really didn't like it. Oh, no. It was like aggressively. Are you a Castlevania Symphony of the Night fan? It's fine. I mean, yeah. Don't oh, say my it. Lord. Oh, oh. What? He said it's he fine. He said Castlevania fine. was fine. Fine. One of the most beloved what games is wrong of all with you. you. What, what, do you want to start a list? Because we, we can <laughs> take another two hours. I mean, we recently ranked the top 10 PS4 game, uh, PS games, PlayStation, PlayStation games. full stop games, Anything. and it was like seventh. Yeah. Woo! So, and I feel like it was fine. underrated it's on that fine. list. Yeah, seven yeah. of all time. Yeah. It's fine. All right. Well, all right. moving on. This We're was our show. Start. And yeah. I'm leaving. Uh. All right. Uh, Marty. Yes. Rescue me from that. 
uh, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm like legit, just so stoked for everything we know about in 2018 and and past. And like one of the cool things also is like we were talking about uh, our game of the year last year. At this point last year, three of our nominees literally weren't announced yet. That's so that's true. really cool. Is yeah. like you know we might have some bangers this year that none of us know about. Uh, but does E3 press conference always has stuff we don't expect? Yeah, exactly. Um, but that's not very interesting. So um, honestly, the biggest thing, speaking of E3, I think coming out of that, like the biggest shock to most of us and the biggest reveal, and I have no idea when this game's coming out, probably not 18, <laughs> uh, but for me is uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Hey, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, do you remember when you, when you yeah, said what, you didn't hey, uh, Why? Marty, what we got happened a, with that? We got a quick question about the uh, the Beyond Good and Evil 2, actually. Yeah? Uh, I've already heard people shout out, you were supposed to eat a mug. I was. Yeah, what? Uh, yeah oh, uh, there it is right there, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. They have a uh, screenshot and everything. You put, the, you put that tweet out yeah. and something, that. something happened you know, later like, that day. Like, like with Trump, there's a tweet for everything. God! <laughs> right! <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, well, so we were on the pre-show for Ubisoft, and right, at, I tweeted that out. I didn't think <laughs> it would be there. And it was. So I definitely didn't think that game was real. Uh, can, we, can we get a chant going? Eat the mug. Eat the mug. mug. Eat the mug. This isn't a Eat the mug. Eat the mug. We have a mug. <laughs> if you're listening on we audio, you, there you is did a, this to yourself, Marty. There is a, a edible mug. Are we sure it's edible? <laughs> no. We're you put find out. oh, just a strange like if white foreign object. What I am, <laughs> what I am sure of is it's probably four thousand calories. So what I recommend taking a bite. <laughs> All I know, of Marty, is if you put it in your mouth and chew it, it's edible. So. That's true. That's true. <laughs> it counts. Smell Eat the mug. Eat the mug. Eat the mug. <laughs> Yay! Oh, edible. Do I, have, do I have to eat the whole thing? That is all you have <laughs> to eat. We're going to sit here and wait until you finish eating the mug. All right, we have two, we hours, have two hours, hours to get started. Well, we'll also, wait. Ryan, well, can we well, go back to when you just said that if you put it in your mouth and you can chew it, it's edible? You're a dad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a bad strategy to have. Live and learn. <laughs> <laughs> figure it out. Uh, to be right. honest, this is a good tasting mug. Oh. Yeah, well, well uh, awesome. Marty munches on his mug there. You licked it. I, I don't want to. <laughs> I didn't lick I fake licked it. You licked it. I fake licked it. It's a little uh, wet. Let me go to Gary Wood. 2018 should be a good year for Xbox, Gary. What's uh, what's the top of your wish list for now? Um, I guess there's a few. I like. I, I really am excited about A Way Out. Looks really good mm -hmm. to me. Strong call. I really like uh, co-op. You know, games that I can play with my wife on the couch. You know, cooperatively. And you have to. With yes, and there's no choice. Required? I have to interact with my wife. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you have no choice. I'm, but no, I'm looking for. I, I, increasingly, I like to f find games that we can play together. Like Overcooked is like the popular game in the house right now because it's really fun. But um, yeah, A Way Out just looks uh, brilliant. And I was a huge, huge fan of Brothers. Yeah, which Joseph I, just, Forrest, I just thought was an incredible, incredible game. Yeah, the director, the project director of uh, of that was, did, of course, did. Did Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons? And yeah, yeah, film and it's, as it's well. an increasingly rare. Not a fan of the Oscars, apparently. It's an increasingly rare kind of game as well. You have all these big kind of AAA, you know, mega games that aren't necessarily typically that original or innovative. You know, they always tend to be. You know, the the the, the more money gets spent on the game, the le the the more risk averse True. they become. So it just becomes these kind of formulaic shooters, and uh, and then there's a really nice indie scene. Uh, but there's very rarely anything kind of in the middle, like kind of mini, like a mini major oh, kind of game, and that's yeah. and that's exactly what this is, though, like high production values. Yeah, but EA they, originals. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and I love that, and I hope that they're going to do more stuff like that. But it allows someone like Joe to come in and, and innovate and take risks and do something that you wouldn't typically see, but spend a bit of money and make it look really lavish and good and real production values as well. Yeah, I think it's it's really interesting to me that like, you know, last year, it's, it's I don't think anyone would argue that EA took a lot of shots on the jaw after uh, Mass Effect and Battlefront and the closure of Visceral and everything and sort of disruption of Bioware, but then, you know, this year, their first two major games this year are going to be Faye, which is a Another yeah, original. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then A Way Out in March. Um, and so, yeah, I really love, like, Alana, you mentioned UB Arts, which got us Child of Light, Valiant Hearts, Valiant Hearts and, and, you know, Rayman Origins and Legends. Um, and so, yeah, I love seeing these giant, like, you know, AAA machines also, like you said, giving the money and the freedom to these super creative developers to make these kind of auteur projects. Isn't 2K doing something they called Private Division or something where they're encouraging yeah. that kind of mid-level development where yep. people can take risks, but again, yep. also um, you know, spend a bit of money and not just have it be kind of like a rough around the edges yep. indie game. Yeah, And they should, because a week of 
of FIFA Ultimate Team card sales probably f could fund 12 <laughs> phase or 12 way outs. Yeah. So I really, I'm very invested in those games being, I hope that gamers flock to them and buy them and demonstrate that there is money to be made. Because that's what the EA cares about, right? They're not, companies like EA, they're not patrons of the arts. They're there to make money. They're companies. And so if these oh, games, yeah, yeah, they're there to <laughs> increase shareholder value. And so if those games do that, then they will make more and more. And that's what, you know, it's up to us to support those games and uh, encourage them to make more like yeah, did, uh, you... did anybody play Unravel? No, just me. A huh? few people. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Yeah. yeah, that was the first EA original. That well, yeah, and I remember the developer on stage like shaking while he was holding yeah. his Yanni that was like handmade, and it was just like a beautiful thing great. that you don't get from like the PR presenters. Video. I'm old enough to remember when EA Originals was just called Electronic Arts. <laughs> <laughs> and they made. Oh. And now, and now, what does this say about the state of the industry that? the fact that they're making original games that has to be put under a separate banner. Oh, here's where we make our original games. <laughs> yeah. Everything because the main business is something yeah. completely different over here. No. True. Destin, I cut you off there. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to ask, how do you think the fact that uh, with a way out they're going to allow you to buy one game and play with a friend, do you think that's going to impact shareholders' perspective? I, I don't know, but I think it's, I think it's a necessary um, component of doing something like that. If, if, if you say, well, you need two people to play this game and they both have their own copy of the game. The least you can do, mm -hmm. I think, is allow that kind of sharing. I think if they hadn't done that, it probably would have been, I mean, who's to know? Yeah. I, mean, I think it probably would have impacted them more adversely. People say, I'm not buying two copies of this. Yeah. It yeah. sucked a little bit for Dead Space 3 because it had co-op that was actually really good, sure. but uh, it wasn't split screen, so you had to have that. And a lot of people mm -hmm. missed out on it because of that, and that was like one of the best things about that mm -hmm. game. Is that basically uh, one of you would see things on screen that the other person wouldn't see, so yeah. it would be like one person would be like, oh, this is all happening in this room because you're playing this guy, Kava, who's going kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. And I think it, the other person is just playing as Isaac and <laughs> isn't going crazy, so it's like the dialogue between those two people in yeah. different settings is really It's the only game I've ever played where like the friend I was, I think I was playing with Mitch. He yeah. was an unreliable narrator to me because I'm like, yeah, he's he passed away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, he like it was an unreliable narrator playing yeah. the game. Like I, you're telling me that there are monsters in this room and there clearly aren't. Yeah, so what's, what's wrong with you? People played that mode because mm -hmm. not that many people bought Dead Space Three. Yeah. So, yeah. well, uh, I will. Uh, I pulled rank to steal Sea of Thieves <laughs> as my pick for 2018. Uh, actually, I just filled in the doc first. Yeah. So okay, that's yeah. That's what timely. Mean by that. You're the host. You can pull. Right. That's just being the host. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is. It's it's out. It's finally coming out. Uh, the closed beta was just announced. Has anybody played in the alpha, the insider alpha? Okay, remember, don't tell anybody. It's illegal to raise yet. your hands. You <laughs> signed an NDA. You're all under arrest. Yeah, we'll talk about it. It. Uh, Phil Spencer's waiting in the next room to yeah. revoke your Xbox Live for yeah. privileges <laughs> forever. No. Uh, yeah, and it, you know every t every time we've played it, which admittedly has been in a short burst, sort of one adventure, and we're seeing it up there now, we've had the most incredible time mm -hmm. together. And so, you know, yeah, we've had some legitimate concerns about what's the long game here, and and will it be fun for more than a thirty minute burst? And we're gonna finally find out soon. But this is, I mean, Rare's first quote unquote real game since. Uh, was it not, would it be nuts and bolts? Oh God! Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I guess re replay yeah. doesn't count, and then they did all the connect. Yeah. Right, all the all the connect. Yeah, you're right. It's the, nuts yeah. and bolts. This is my this is connect. But we like right. to pretend nuts and bolts doesn't exist. So. Yeah, we don't. There are two banjo games. So Viva Viva Viva. Viva. Do we have to go back to Viva Pinata? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, we can go back that far. Yeah. It's fine. So yeah, if you haven't played Sea of Thieves and you've heard us talk about it, I see this a lot in the IGN comments where people are like. <sighs> It just doesn't it doesn't look fun. It really is. You've got you have to play it. Yeah, I mean, it totally. really is just a, a thing you, you you have to experience it for yourself. So inevitably, there's of course going to be an open beta that they just haven't announced yet. I'm sure it'll either be in February or early March. But so people are allowed to live stream and do let's plays of the uh, closed beta that's yes. happening uh, late, at this late month. January. Yeah, so I think that'll be a really good way to see what it's like with real personalities and not like those scripted ones that we've seen at E3. Yeah, yeah. we keep talking about doing. A, an episode of Unlocked from within Sea of we Thieves. We totally should. So whether Let's that's have our own the beta or we'll see if we the final it, yeah. version. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Yeah, we'll do it. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely my pick. And and it's uh, I was just so glad it's got a release date and it's it's happening. And it's really the... it's What is the release date? March 20th, 20th. I believe. Because we all said 23rd the other day. And then I looked it up and I'm like, oh, we were all it's, wrong. It's the 20th. 320. <laughs> and then I think A Way Out is the 23rd. Yeah, you know, you're probably right. Because I'm super interested in both games and they're they're both out the same week. So And MLB The Show. Yeah. And MLB The Show. <laughs> what does The Show mean? No, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> oh, no, not again. Yeah, it, I, I, get the, I get asked this from time to time on Twitter, too. It's like... Hey Ryan, what is, is Xbox ever going to get a real baseball game? No, 
The answer is no. <laughs> that ship sailed long ago. Just buy a PS4 and buy the show. You'll you'll be happy. Trust me. Uh, so that leaves Destin. Okay. 2018. What's not? What's top of your wish list, Destin? I think anybody who knows me probably could have guessed this one as a big Mass Effect fan. Just oh damn it. <laughs> no. Destiny, Destiny Two again. Destiny Two isn't. In a special place in my heart right now. Let's oh. just say that. Like, it's kind Rodney of like out. lost its I love, time. How can, can yeah. we talk about the fact that at this point in time, I like Destiny 2, I think, more than you do? I, I think you do. <laughs> I think you do. How did that happen? Because you didn't play a ton of the end game. Yeah. I finished the game, and it was the end of the game That's for me. That's not how that works <laughs> at all. Uh, anyway, uh, so just knowing that uh, Anthem is right around the corner. It's coming from the same team that brought me Mass Effect 1. Uh, you know, Casey Hudson back is back. Drew Carpishan is back on the writings. Uh, staff, uh, I'm I'm really really excited about the game, and it had a fantastic E3 showing. Uh, they made it seem like it was an Xbox exclusive, but I think they're going to have timed exclusivity. The way that the like with the DLC kind of stuff, exactly the, seems way, to be the, the way it's looking, the way that the PlayStation did with Destiny. So the fact that Destiny is kind of losing its shine, and this is a whole new world to explore with the narrative aspects that I've always wanted from Destiny, it's going to kind of marry. All those aspects. I mean, you're right. The Destiny Plus Mass Effect is the most you thing. Ever. Right. Yeah, it it's legitimately is. <laughs> yeah. 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 It may have been made for you. <laughs> yes. But this isn't excited. the Mass Effect universe, is it? It's no. Something no. Not at all. Okay. No. Yeah. It's a totally what if they backdoor universe. it? What's interesting? What if it is? <laughs> You know, that would be I mean, phenomenal. Like, this doesn't look like Garris. this doesn't yeah. look like it's not in the Mass Effect universe. Rex uh, just shows up. Oh, Rex! Yeah. So, so these are uh, javelins that we're seeing on the screen right now, and these are the different. Are you doing a rewind right nerdy. now of the five <laughs> minutes of this nerdy. game we've seen? But uh, yeah, so like you can uh, fly around different javelins and explore the world, and if you actually could see the open world aspects, it's just really exciting. What's interesting about this, Gary? You're you're just bringing this up. So uh, this was. An un the untitled Casey Hudson project before he left Bioware and went to Microsoft and worked on HoloLens for a while, mm -hmm. and he's now come back and just picked up picked up the ball and is running with it again. So, so he left the game and then came back to the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please enjoy it in 2020 on the Xbox Two and the PS5. It's totally this year, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, to definitely this that. year. Yeah, I think it's yeah, probably 2019. I wouldn't I wouldn't promise to eat a mug if it doesn't come out in 2018. <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> Gary, if you, you do. you like to play games with your wife because you have to talk to her. So <laughs> is this one of those games that you would play? I mean, if it's like Destiny 2, no. Why? Because I didn't like Destiny 2. Okay. What's wrong with you guys? I thought Destiny 2 was great. As someone I didn't, who played pl no I didn't play the first one, and I played the second one because, you know, every, some games are so big and they're such a part of the conversation that mm -hmm. even if I'm not that into I feel like I should at least play it so mm -hmm. I can know what I'm talking about when, when, it, when it comes up. So I missed the first one. Uh, and then played the second one, and I got to a certain point. As someone who played a lot of Warcraft, and and ultimately, you know, kind of left that game because at some point you have right. what you have what alcoholics call a moment of clarity. Yeah. When you just you realize just how futile it all is and what a waste <laughs> of time. I feel like that's just, just life in general. That endless <laughs> kind of carrot and stick. Mm -hmm. Well done. You've got a new piece of armor, but it's going to be worthless in a few days, and you have to do it all over again. Is that to me is not fun. So you must have hated the division. No, I no, I liked the it's division. The same thing. Yes, but I like that. For me, a big part of the experience is the universe and what's the world and the world of the division. That kind of post-apocalyptic New York was more interesting to me than what I felt was the very generic kind of sci-fi mashup of of Destiny. So I never, never, and I played the game all the way through the campaign. And I played many hours of the multiplayer. Mm -hmm. I never quite understood what was going on like well, why? You see, the Narrat wizard came narratively from the, moon. the wizard came from the moon yeah. Yeah. and there's a big thing in the sky and these guys are fighting that guy yeah, no, you and i was it. actually kind of <laughs> you, to be, to be quite honest i was astonished well. <laughs> how and obviously it's you, you understand why because it's the same developer i was astonished at just how much it looked and felt like halo all over again to me yeah like these aliens kind of look like halo aliens and but did you there's, know there's, that you can play soccer at the farm it's i played i played some soccer with the big ball i kicked that around nice. congrats um <laughs> but I, I just kind of like for me there needs to be some kind of narrative drive or something that's that's keeping me engaged on that level did and Destiny like didn't feel like it had that what's that did you like the original Mass Effect yes well the lead writer from that is working on Anthem so imagine uh, a collection game like The Division with a fantastic narrative we hope yeah well yeah. that's what <laughs> my hope is yeah, yeah. Which, I mean yeah. Anthem made, made did make a huge splash of E3 was that anybody else's here's their their favorite game from E3 that yeah, that guy that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that's Just Jonathan one. Anthem back there yeah, yeah. The, the first subscriber to your Anthem yeah. podcast yeah. Yeah. Airing, airing every week sitting right back there all right so I'll with try that later. Uh, <laughs> let's move to what we're here for which is to have a little fun with the Xbox 360 
I'm going to guess at least 80% of this room owned a 360 at some point in time. Yes. Yes, because it was a great console, and you should have owned it, and it was awesome. And we, could, thankfully, thanks to backwards compatibility, we could still play lots of the games. Um, the compatibility team is, I feel, again, I've said this before, but I feel like the backwards compatibility team at Microsoft, it, and I'm not just saying this because I got to spend the day mm. meeting them and interviewing them, but it's just like they just don't get enough credit in the industry for what Microsoft's doing with compatibility. I think people don't realize how hot it is. It is, actually. yeah, and, and they put in the effort. It's like, Sony, you got to... You gotta, if they re-release something, you got to pay for it. I mean, I've said it's, uh, I find it so insane that the Xbox, which has the shortest legacy of the three first parties, is the one that is the best at preserving it right now. That's a good point. Like, Nintendo, what are you doing with Virtual Console? Why are you releasing the Super Nintendo Classic that I can't buy? Yeah. And Sony, exactly what you said. Like, I can't put in a PS3 game and play it. That's insane to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's rank the top 10 360 games. Uh, we'll... Who who can Mark can explain the rules? Yeah, I don't know what the rules are at all. I don't know what the rules are. Do we just start yelling? It's or the Thunderdome. There are no rules. Yeah. All right. So basically, what the rules are, taken from another podcast, is we have the list of the top ten Xbox 360 game IGN's last list it's supposed to be right there. It just doesn't lock. Damn it. There it is. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So there's the top ten Xbox 360 games the last time we ranked them, which was. 2015. Wow. Yeah. September 2015. I, I was looking <laughs> at this. I'm going to be honest. Two of those are several games. Uh, we, yeah, we cheated I, big time yeah. on the. On uh, Mass Effect one, Trilogy. I, okay. I don't know how we <laughs> got And the Orange that. Box, also several Wait, games. Yeah, what? That's not, <laughs> that's not really che super cheating. Yeah. Mass Effect no. Trilogy is way cheating. But you whatever. Think the Orange Box isn't multiple games. But there are other games there that are parts of trilogies. So why <laughs> is only Mass Effect considered? How come it only says Rock Every Band Three and not why Rock Band trilogy. Going Why isn't it the Halo trilogy? Also Fallout. <laughs> All right, no, Anyways, it's fine. It's fine. Sorry, it's fine. Sorry. Move it. Uh, we're accepting. Yeah, there's it. literally three other games there that have a three on the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but only fine. Mass Effect gets to be a trilogy. Uh, yeah. So basically, what's going to happen <laughs> is the panel. Everybody gets one turn on the panel, and then five of you get a turn, and I'll draw your name with these. That's why you have your raffle ticket, so keep them handy. Uh, so basically what's going to happen is somebody, you get one of two turns. Uh, you either get to take a game not on this list and put it on the list. And you can put it whatever, wherever you want. Uh, or... <laughs> Barrett? Is that my boy Barrett? Barrett? <laughs> Where are you? Not an Xbox 360 game. <laughs> <laughs> but a rare game, which is now on close game. enough. Yeah. Uh, or you can take, or you, Jesus Christ, <laughs> or you can take any number on the list and swap it with something else. So if you're like, oh, you know what? I think Portal 2 is great. It should go on number one. That's what'll happen. Uh, and we fully expect by the end of this for this list to just be nonsense. Business. <laughs> That's okay. the fun. Uh, so Ryan's going to kick it off, and then we're going to do an audience member, and so I'll do a uh, raffle ticket. Uh, it, what you're going to do is you're going to come up here, and you're going to stand right here, and you're going to talk into this microphone, and you're going to say, your game. And then you get one of these really, really cool prizes. There's a lot of stuff over here. You can have whatever you want. <laughs> Does that include the arcade machines? Yeah, go and for the it. And the enough. large speaker, which is probably worth more than anything else? No. Okay. No not mind. that stuff. Also, I just realized the Mass Effect trilogy is probably counted as one because it was sold as a bundle. On the PS3, it was. Let it go. Is it not on right? Xbox as well? It doesn't yeah. matter. It totally was on both consoles. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was. We make up our own rules here. Yeah. It's fine. All right. So, all right. I get, I get to go first? Brian, you're first. Ooh, I get to go first. Show them how it's done. Well, I should probably... I made a list of other games that weren't on this list. So, I feel like... Uh, Wait. <laughs> What? Didn't you make the top ten? Yeah, but I, that was years ago. All right. I'm a new me now. <laughs> well, he didn't. I, I, you probably like had a committee, right? Oh yeah. No, I it, had was, to, it was you and Mitch. Pretty much, <laughs> to be honest. So burnout. I'm gonna go uh, near and dear to. I oh, thought you were gonna say near. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh, this is an oddball. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> but I think Alana, you will still have that smile on your face when. I th I'm gonna I'm gonna put in Fable Two at number nine, okay, replacing right, Rock okay. Band Three. There, you said Fable, and I was excited. Then you said Two, but that's fine. I mean, he said the best Fable game. Yeah, so that's great. <coughs> Why can't we put it's Fable fine. Trilogy? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't released apparently. Uh, yeah, I love Fable Two. Uh, fa do we are we all agree? Yes, Fable Two is the best Fable game. It's TLC. Mostly it's TLC. nods of yes. It's definitely TLC. Does anyone think Fable? <laughs> uh, 
TLC is the best one. You just tender loving it was care. The lost <laughs> I was trying to Don't say no. I was trying to say Marty. tender loving care. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah. No one said anything, so no, they don't agree. It's fine. Cause I'm happy to just have Fable, Fable up there. Thank 3. you for capitalizing It's that. not three or the journey. We know that much. Yes. Ooh. All right. Okay. You had to review the journey. I had to review the journey. I and volunteered. That was a so mistake. So wait, did you just put that as like number nine or... You get to choose where you put it, right? There? And then yes, it gets... I have chosen it and at number, number nine, nine under the game. Oh, you put it as number nine? Yeah. Okay. Yes. But then what... So so what's what's gone? Uh, I bumped Rock, Rock Band. Band. Wow. Okay. Uh, okay. The day the music really died. Really on the rules. Truly. It's going, but we're all good. No, I feel good about that. Uh, but yeah, it's Fable just has. I, I, are, is everybody feeling good about these these playground reviving Fable rumors that are going around now? Yeah, I mean, who who better really? Than if it's got to, it's got to be British, right? We're not crazy about that. Like it has to be a British developer that brings that series back. Uh, so hopefully that we'll see if that rumor pans out. Gary, right? Fable. Yes, please. Please. You want me to write? Yeah, Fable? you're British. Yes. Oh, okay. you're British. We are nominating and you. And Fable. you've yeah. you've written video games because so I'm good. British. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're, yep. you're right. pre-qualified. Okay. Yep. I'll I'll get right on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna they're, they're gonna make Fable Four. Is that right? Uh, there rumor. is a rumor going around that Fable will return under the the guise of Playground Games, who are the Forza Horizon developers. They're staffing up a second team at a second studio. Uh, with a lot of uh, what's so ex, ex rock star talent, some other yeah. some ex, of their own people, uh, gorilla gorilla. Talent. Yeah. yeah, and some other uh, folks as well. So mm -hmm. they've got a heck of a track record so far with the Horizon. The other rumor is that you're going to play as a car. It's going to be a I was car. Gonna say, that's that kind of a weird turbo team. Yeah, a car travels to Albion, and you are the car. Yeah. that's my rumor, or lie. It's just the thing Marty said. That it's what yeah, I would like. It's no Gary, you don't seem like you're on board. Are we not writing partners anymore? It just, <laughs> it, just seems, it just seems like a strange direction for that developer to go in from like super hardcore driving sim to medieval open world rpg well True. but it is horizon so it's you know they had the hot car oh horizon okay. yeah no 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 right. Horizon. For, yeah yeah for Horizon. yes yeah. it's not turn 10 so it's like a little silly but it is they're not they are working on a game that is not a racing game right now okay yeah Brand i mean game. i like fable yeah and the last well, horizon. Congrats, you're writing oh, it. Got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I should hope so. <laughs> I know Peter Molyneux. I think we can yeah. make this yeah, happen, you guys. And Forza Horizon 3 took place in Australia, which is like ostensibly as dangerous as Albion, right? Yeah, we got Balverines. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> sure. No? <laughs> we got Balverines. Yeah, tons of those. I would Balverines. believe you if you said yeah. that. Balverines actually originated yeah. in uh, Australia. Thank you. <clears throat> Excellent. So we're going uh, yep. audience member now, yes? So now we're going to go to an audience member. Uh, I also have more than five prizes. If you don't want to do an Xbox 360 game, then just take a prize. Wait. <laughs> what? Well, I mean, you should have, I feel like. Just move some. You can't name, like, Mega Man 2. I'm not going to allow Mega Man 2 to get on this All list. All right, so here's the first raffle ticket. Oh. Um, let me take a look. Four, five, zero, four, seven, six. Why are there so many numbers? There's nobody. Like a thousand people here. <laughs> we were expecting a much that's, larger that's, turnout. It seems. That's nobody. Is that your ticket? <laughs> okay, I'm pulling another I one. <laughs> Hearing nothing. Maybe I just got to read the last three. That was yeah, one of the people who raised their hands when uh, they said they played the Sea of Thieves alpha and they got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> so they're currently they're, they're, they're in, they're in, they're in real yeah. human jail. Yeah. All right, last three. We call Here it we go. Marty. Four. Seven seven. Hey, somebody. <laughs> so, All right. All right. Wait, so real talk. If he names like the sneaking, it's on the list. He literally I'll, can name give him whatever he wants. Well, I'm just saying, like, is there precaution? But I'm gonna be honest, the over biggest here. problem right. with this right. is he gets to do how do you want. kick any of these off? Like I know what I would add. I don't know what I'm gonna take. Did you say? Oh, uh, did you say Sneak King? Yeah. Because yeah. those, those Burger King a, games. That was a 360 yeah, game. I collected all of them, and so I'll tell I. you, they were better than they had any right to be. I mean, yeah. they're better than a lot of games I've reviewed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like 2.99 with your Happy Meal or whatever. Yeah. The sneak King, King was the highlight of the three, I, yeah. as I recall. Yeah. 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 Uh, big Bumpin', right? Big Bumpin', yeah. Yeah. What was the okay. third one? I forget the other one. Go ahead. Hi. Um, What's your name? Where are you my from? My name is Matt, and I'm. Here. So, Excellent. Uh, Welcome to here. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely criminal that Bioshock is number ten. So uh, switch it with the orange box. <laughs> okay. All right. 
That's good. I'm, I'm yeah, glad. Half Life's overrated. It it's down. fine. No, I'm totally it fine is, with this is, because it is extremely overrated. I agree I with mean, you. I mean, I was joking, but <laughs> uh, real talk. Sorry. I I said at, it. No, real talk. <laughs> I agree with him. I think Half Life's overrated. To be perfectly real, I think Gordon Freeman is one of the worst main we'll characters in any game ever, and anyone who likes right, him is so bad. Like Alexio oh, wow, really is committed to that. Good job. Okay. So wow, he's moving. That's fine. I'm fine. Swapping. Yeah. The swapping order here. Up. There you go. Orange box spot. Uh, would you kindly set the Trello board? That was a line in uh, I don't like Portal the being, Bioshock. I don't you like Portal it. being that small. Oh, so or that, that low. on the right, that's supposed to be in order? Yeah. Up to bottom? Okay. Yeah. For now. All right. Uh, let's, let me go uh, Gary's way next. The do you want me to open. pick a game that's on the list or one that's not on the list? Whatever strikes your, your heart, Gary. Well, I mean, of the... Uh, Okay, of the ones that are on that list, my personal favorites are Red Dead, Portal 2, and um, Mass Effect. But mostly for Mass Effect 2, which I think is by far the best of the three. Is there a, is there a game that we, that we have neglected from the list? Burnout Paradise. Oh, I know. I was oh, excited know. when you said Burnout and then you <laughs> said Paradise, and I got words. less excited. Oh, the game that removed Crash Mode. Too. Gary, destroy the world and put Burnout on this list and remove one of them. I would, I, if, if I could, if I had a magic wand, I would bring Burnout back. Burnout again. You and me both. Yeah. But you're I, too busy writing things. Every time I hear that Criterion are doing something else that's not Burnout, I just get really sad. Yeah. Because <laughs> I just want, that's their first and best destiny. Is to make, wait, what do you think is the best Burnout game, if not Paradise? Three. three. Yeah. No, yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, one? I liked Revenge better than three. That was on the original Xbox. Xbox which, one was, which one was uh, Takedown? Takedown was that, the one that bridged. Three. It was original Xbox and. No, that's three. That's oh, three. Uh, so, but I like Takedown. Takedown was the first 360 one. It was before Paradise. I think no, no. probably of We're, them. Yeah. Three, it, I think you're probably right, is actually the best game. But I have the fondest memories of Paradise because that was the one that I could play open world with all my friends. And we would go off and just do crazy jumps off cliffs and stuff. And I just have very fond memories of playing Paradise. But I think you're right, it's probably not the best burnout game. Yeah, I mean, I've, you could I've, have a whole podcast just ranking burnout games. That's true. We're, we're, we <laughs> Ryan does that we like do, every other episode. That is true. That's, <laughs> yeah, I've always felt like burnout worked better as a closed circuit game than an open world game, uh, just where it's predefined tracks. Uh, you know, road rage mode. The, the open world. I when I, I remember playing Paradise, and you're just you're flying around so fast, and, and there are no walls. So I would I would just the little arrows would come up, and I would just miss turns, mm -hmm. and just sort of throw myself off the, in the whole race. Uh, Ryan, maybe you should get good. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you I mean, said no. <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest though. I'm glad you said the open world burnout game because my. Fable pitch where you play as a car in Fable in an open world game still is on the table. So that is Gary's. You Burnout can Paradise. write the car. You could be the car from Burnout Paradise. You're thinking about it now. So now it's Fable and Burnout Paradise that are nah. Yeah, but it's Fable yours. Paradise. It's yours. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will. I will say that I'm actually. I, I'm not a huge fan of that open world trending games. It's like Horizon and Need for Speed went in that direction as well. And as 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 well curated as they try to make that open world experience, I often find myself just driving around aimlessly trying to find something to do. Um, I kind of miss the old days. you play Horizon 3? Yeah, and, and again, they make it super easy, lock in waypoints, but there's still a lot of like driving from place to place. I know you can kind of teleport around, but I just kind of miss the old days of racing games. It's like, I want to do a crash mode, and, mm -hmm. you just go and you're in crash mode. That's the thing I miss the most, like crash mode. Like crash mode to me, was that awesome. was like the best puzzle game of the th What was that the one era? that had traffic totally checking? Because that was my favorite. Oh, that was so good. And then traffic you had the checking afterburn where you yeah, blow yeah, up yeah. at the end. So, oh. so traffic good. Traffic checking was introduced in Revenge. Yeah. Three didn't have it. And Revenge had its, for me, it kind of made the game a little too easy, mm -hmm. but I do, it is fun to just bump people off. You, there's no denying that. Uh, you mean like so knock them off the road, not kill them? Like the well, I don't know what happens to, to take them out after they go flying. Oh, they're the dead. They're I'm dead. going to assume they survived and have airbags. Oh, they're all, uh, those are all self driving cars, right? <laughs> yeah. It's fine. There's no one in those cars. Uh, so you're adding Paradise. What are you taking off? Oh, I have to take something. Uh, yeah, please. that's the, yeah. the challenge. Uh, let, if he adds Paradise, just whatever's number It'll bump 10 something bumps off. off. Yep. Oh. oh, but that would just mean he adds it at number nine, though, right? Wait, so if I had a game, if he I had a he game whatever's on the bottom gets bumped off? Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want to bump uh, off the orange box. That's the game too is bad, awesome. Gary. What else? You're making that choice. <laughs> I feel like he should be able to do a hot swap. <laughs> well, you can put the orange box up. Gary Weta thinks Burnout is better than But no, I want him to... I, I, I want the list to <laughs> get shaken up. Ryan do that? You swapped... Fable 2 in for uh, Rock Band. So, yeah, the rules no, are Rock, rock Band was number 10. It was, so rock it was band 9, got bumped off. wasn't it? Yeah, it was Bioshock was 10, and it was 9. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what? I, okay. We make the rules here. Do whatever Talking you want. <laughs> Gary, what do you want off the list? Yeah, you, you so put, I can take anything off there. the list. Yeah. Yes, it's yours. And okay, so just understand that this is not about me saying I think one game's better than another. This is just like if I'm doing like my ten desert island games, what would I take off? Sure. Just pick one. Probably Halo Three. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and the room turns on Gary. <laughs> Don't worry, right. the room has mm. several chances okay. to put a Halo <laughs> game back All on right. the list. I, I'm. These shows need chaos. Well, Chaos you're, is a ladder. You, yeah, you're all gonna be very mad about what I have planned. Oh, I'm getting mind. yeah, I'm getting bad. Introduce yeah. a little chaos. <laughs> very good. That was really good. Christopher Nolan. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we have our next ticket now. I'm just gonna read the last three. Four, eight, zero. Do we Four eighty. A winner. Let's Four no? eight zero. All right. Keep Nobody. Keep okay. Drawn. I'm going to just start grabbing four at a time. <laughs> okay, here we go. Five, zero, eight. Why didn't I grab right, four well, at a time? You re I'm going to read some more games while you pick another one that, just, that aren't on this list that I went through today and was like, okay, we got some good stuff here. So uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth came out late in the 360 generation. That was good. That was a good game. I like Fez. That. Uh, I love Fez. Also you have, you love have Fez. Minecraft out there, Gears 3, uh, Forza 4, Rayman Legends, Shadow Complex, uh, Walking Dead Season 1 was my game of the year vote when I first came to IGN in 2012. I want to pause for a sec. We don't have a Gears game on this list. Yeah, no, I'm good. I got what? you. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. I Thanks, got you. Uh, yeah. I will say that Gears 3 Horde Mode was fantastic. Yes. So good. Four-player yeah, Horde Mode. Well, what's, three? what's the best Gears game? It's Gears 2, right? No. No, it's, it's Gears three. 2, right? Like, Horde Mode, because 3... Three, you, because you, of Horton. Harry is correct. Well, anyway, uh, Monty, you want to read it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Four, six, six. Oh, all here right. we go. All right. Come on up if you'd like. <laughs> How's the mug, Marty? He had a single bite. He all right, there everyone. Is a, there, is a, there is a little nibble taken out of that. Do, do I need to bite it again? Yeah. We need a good photo for social later. Just take a big chomp out of it. All right. Hello, sir. What is your name? You shouldn't uh, have tweeted, Eric. dude. That was <laughs> Ryan. What? What is this gentleman's name? Uh, uh, Eric. Okay. Where are you from? Um, San Francisco. Okay. Excellent. Cool. Actually, uh, I was wondering why Fallout 3 is actually on the bottom earlier. I actually want to bump it up even. Respect. Maybe Fort, the Fort one. So we're swapping it oh, with Portal 2. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Valve is getting, the, is right? getting the shaft on okay. this list so far. Well, maybe if Valve released I a game that wasn't half, it was <laughs> then they wouldn't be getting the shaft. He's like, no, keep on out Paradise. Get Portal 2 down there. <laughs> All right. Be sure to grab a prize uh, over okay. there. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, some other ones that I had, had written down. There's Call of Duty 4, very transformative game, obviously. 2007, one of the best years ever Never for games. Of it. Uh, Shadow Complex. Thank you so much, by the way. Wait, no, which one was which one was for? Modern Warfare? Yes. yes. Okay, that was yeah. good. Uh, that was it. That changed everything. After. Yeah. Here, here's yeah. one. Here's a game I guarantee people Fire in this Nation room attacked. haven't thought about in a while, but I love this video game, and that is Mark of the Ninja. One of the best. Oh, so games. good. See, I, I did it yeah. too. I got so you. good. Yeah. Mark of the Ninja. Uh, of course, Limbo. I don't know how that's not on the top 10 already. Uh, don't worry, we're going to get some yeah, XBLA gonna... <laughs> love on here. Yeah. Don't worry. Mirror's yeah. Edge, Dark Souls, uh, Halo 4, Batman Arkham City, uh, and Arkham then we move in. So, I mean, I got, and I got a bunch more written down. That's my so. thing. Like, this list right now, like, it doesn't have Dark Souls on here. It doesn't have an Arkham game on here. It should have an Arkham game. Arkham City. That's the one. Arkham sounds better. All right. Uh, no, so definitely. we're on to <clears throat> panelists next, I believe. Yes. No, that was it. We just said a panelist. Oh, that, yeah. was the, that was the swan. Yeah. Oh, no, panelists. We're a panelist. You yeah, yes, that, it us. <laughs> You looked at Mark. Right, you well, tricked me. You were like, okay. the, the, the Alana, Alana, you teased. Uh, you said you've got our backs here. With, well, with well, I have his. Uh, <laughs> all right, context. <laughs> Before anyone gets mad, I like to just really throw red herrings into these uh, and just arbitrarily do something. Please don't yell at me on the internet later. I am uh, putting in Gears of War 2 and taking out Skyrim. That's fine. I think it's overrated. Fallout is better. Thank you. Real talk, I was going to take off Skyrim, too. So oh, we already did that. Okay, we're all, all right. good. I would have swapped Oblivion in for Skyrim myself. Well, so. you, I mean, you already know this. I prefer Morrowind. That technically wasn't yep. a release, so it doesn't count. But um, I've always preferred the Fallout series. I didn't I didn't enjoy Skyrim half as much as everyone else. Gears of War 2, I did. 
I was just going to move Fallout to number one, but it seems safe. So also. let's talk I'm about. I'm cool with that too, actually. <laughs> let's talk about Gears Two because it, yeah. it, it really it is my least favorite, but it is your favorite. Easy to me. What what is it about Gears Two that, that I think uh, it's the know? one that gave me the emotional attachment? Or like it's a fo it's the only video game that's ever made me cry. Maria. That's, a big part, that's exactly why, uh, and that's a big part of it. But it's also like it introduced so many weird things, like uh, the like science facility and everything that was happening in there and it seemed like the AI in that place had gone AWOL and yeah. then the razor hail and it was just like so many Ready? interesting concepts. Razor hail. Thank you. Uh, I, no, I, 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 can't I can't distinguish between the Gears of War games. They all feel, uh, I, maybe I just don't remember them quite well, but like I can't tell the difference between the story in one and two and three. It all just kind of feel, they all just blur into one for me. Is that just I mean, me? That's fair. Well, I, I feel like I can I, distinguish them pretty well. Yeah, I f I, they're pretty defined in my head. Yeah. The first one what was, was the one where you had to chainsaw your way out of that monster? That's Chain the that's second one. Second okay, so that was, yeah, I, that I remember is, that. That was, that was <laughs> awesome. And that's, yeah. that's my least favorite part of that. That was nice. great. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. The magic oh, all up inside of The worm stomach. part was the worst, no, dumbest part of the game. I mean, but two was the game that introduced horde mode. Yes. Yeah, I would agree that three made it better, but. I think that's a big part of it is, you know, that was the first game, not to the franchise, but pretty much ever that, what did, Going on Barrett, did you put Donkey Kong Barrett, back on I swear place? to God. <laughs> I mean, you put Marvel yeah, in the three, I love Three's Horde mode because you could play it as the locust. Right. It just yes. totally took Horde to the next level. I think I it also agree it refined it or made it better, but, you know, yeah. to introduce I mean, I think uh, we've talked about this on the show before. I think with a lot of the AAA games, especially of this generation, even if you look back at, like, how. Mega Man 2 refined upon Mega Man 1, and then how a lot of the Super Nintendo, first party Nintendo games refined upon their NES iterations. Um, I think like the 360 generation to me is the what Ubisoft did with AC2 that built upon AC1. And I honestly feel, or like what uh, Arkham City did that built upon uh, Arkham Asylum, uh, or Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 1. I honestly think, to me, that's the reason I like Gears 2 better, is because it took such an incredible foundation mm -hmm. of Gears 1, and everything just feels so much better. Like, they just perfected the way that locomotion and, and movement feels yeah. in that series. Can and it really was influential. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the idea of a cover shooter was not something we thought of before. Then and just so many like the roadie run always just felt really yeah. great. Active reload was a thing Seriously. that intru yeah. introduced so, so many great concepts that so many other games then. I mean, went even Grand Theft Auto, Rockstar said that they were inspired to do their cover system based on Gears yeah. of War, and like that's that's insane to inspire yeah. Rockstar is like that's what you want from yeah. a game. Uh, I'll give you while while Mark readies up another another ticket there. I'll rattle off a few more games that I had written down for people to think about. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 1, I thought, is, is maybe the best or second best campaign in the whole series. Uh, the numbers, Mason. You had uh, Borderlands 2, Saint, yeah, Saints, <laughs> this guy, Saints, uh, Saints Row the Third, I think is the clear yeah. peak of the series there. Uh, oh no, I think 4 is even better. Really? I like yeah. 4 a lot. Because 4, four over, was just like, they, the they just went like, who, they like, just went like, let's just go all out nuts. Yeah, I like yeah. 4. And that was what made it you fun You jumped out of a plane to but four, tiny made West it, Power. Yeah, it doesn't 4 start with you like clinging to the side of a rocket? I'm pretty sure that happens in the side. You think of the end of Doctor Strangelove. <laughs> I'm absolutely not thinking of that. Okay. They are, uh, 3 and 4 though, are both, they're both incredible. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, if you yeah. never... If you never finish Saints Row 3, you have to YouTube both endings. That game has two endings, and they're both ridiculous in the best, of, in the very, very best of ways. One involved uh, a, a lot of things not being real, and it was uh, it was very. very I would definitely put. I feel like I blew my choice with Burnout. Now I love Burnout, but man. <laughs> Saints Row, so many happy memories of playing those Saints Row games as they, you know, as they got progressively. You know, it started as just kind of a GTA. Cash an in, right? Clone, clone. Yeah. But then they just leaned into into the absurdity of yeah. it increasingly with each iteration. What if we added more dildos? And then they just did I it. know. Did. And just <laughs> several. Just kept yeah. And what, and, what, and what if you're now the president? Like it's just ridiculous, <laughs> utterly ridiculous. <laughs> and that's so I much feel fun. Like Saints Row. They kind of painted themselves into a corner. Eventually, we're like. We can't make it any crazier. Yeah. This is it. What it do we do now? As, uh, it's coming back to me now. Saints Row Four isn't that the one? You the opening is, is you're doing the heist when everyone's wearing giant Johnny Gat heads, right? That's the opening of Saints Row 4. Boy, I don't thing. remember now. That sounds right. Uh, yeah. oh, that's, that's three? three. Okay. The yeah. start of four, you are there is some kind of break-in mission, but then uh, you're the president. and You're in the have, White House. That's it gives right. you that prompt that it's like, punch a dick in the head or punch. <laughs> it's, it's like you've got the choice between punching someone. Yeah, I'll punch a dickhead. Yeah. So you either punch him in the penis or in the face. <laughs> and that's how that game starts out. Uh, and then there's an alien abduction. Yeah, so um, many. Did you I say punch a dick in the head? 
Yeah, that's literally the choice. It's I punch a dickhead or punch just his asking. dick I was in just the asking. head. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and this read this. It's like how we can say <laughs> shithole now, and it's okay. We can absolutely say shithole now. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Uh, We're journalists. Smart. <laughs> I'll, I'll, get, it's fine. I'll get us out of this conversation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bring us right back into it, so don't worry. <laughs> okay, here we go. Last three. Five, one, one. I heard somebody go, oh. All right. All oh. Right. oh, there we go. Come on around. <laughs> what do you think happens if you dial 511? What do you think you get? Nothing. I think you get nothing. I guarantee 501 will get you something. Are you going to eat a mug for it? <laughs> no, I'm just going to dial it. Okay, yeah, okay. I have a mug. Hello. Hi. Who Hi. You? What's your name? Adam. Where are you Adam, from? Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Are you um, from San Francisco? Yes. Nailed it. Sensing I, some variety. One of your neighbors. Yeah. And a couple of doors. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. I kind of want to mess this up a little bit. Um, Please. Be weird. Oh, because it's already perfect. So. <laughs> I'm. I'm yeah. thinking. I'm thinking. I don't know if you guys are gonna like me. Uh, sports sim game. <laughs> oh no, I don't like that. <laughs> already. Oh, this is already. On. But a good one. But a okay. really good one. Um, NBA 2K11. With the Jordan, the Jordan year. Yeah, that was that, and that changed the, the series. The, the final nail yeah. in the NBA live coffin. Yeah. Okay, but what are you getting rid of? This is this is where yeah, this, <laughs> this is where you guys are gonna hate me. Uh, I got, the I, cops the, are already coming. The, one, the, one, <laughs> <laughs> the actual police are coming. Yeah, like, I, I don't. I, I had some good times playing Burnout. I didn't play Paradise. Um, the one that I would get rid of would, would be Fable Two. Oh. I'm not gonna get rid of Valve games. Get out of my building. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. That's all right. <laughs> NBA 2K11. Yeah, that was. All right. Why? Why that one as opposed to any other? Year? I mean, so I'll let, actually I'll, I'll let our guests speak more to it. I definitely remember that one well. But yeah, I thought that was a year that they because uh, if you if you look at like 2K9, 2K10, the gameplay is not as refined. Um, and if you go back to, I think you guys have said the same thing. It's sort of like oh, the Citizen Kane of basketball games, as silly as that is. Uh, 2K11 was. Well, wait, who year. said the Citizen Kane of basketball <laughs> games? I, you, you know said what? you guys, and I want to make sure I, that I'm not a part of this narrative. I, I want, yeah, I want to say um, I January either said that about 2K11 or 2K16 was, that was sort of the peak of basketball so shame there simulation. Wasn't okay, Dan Stapleton was yeah. not a reviews editor in 2011, so he <laughs> would not have allowed that. <laughs> yeah, so so 2K11 I, I thought was Dan would have just immediately fired when them. the series got. You know, got its gameplay down. Yeah, as I remember, Gary, that that year <laughs> was just this bizarre <laughs> convergence of forces. <laughs> uh, so that was uh, EA's game fell apart that year. That, that was, was the, the year, year that the game was went off the, the rails Jesus so badly they just they just and, killed it. Yeah, they killed okay. it the, at the last second. Was yeah. that the infamously you pl you had your review done? Yeah, it was. Uh, I re I reviewed the game. It was done, for, and then they canceled it, at, and we didn't print it. <laughs> And it, yeah, that, I had a finished. This review How late did so that go? Long. Were they actually like in manufacturing when they pulled yes. that? Or uh, okay, like it just said, keeps going. I had a we had a review build, and I had a review written and done, so the game was complete. And Peter Moore pulled it pulled it away. Because I remember like the the, the game the producer or the director of the game were having like issuing this like public mea culpa for like how badly it went off the rails. Yeah. it was a big deal. At the time. Yeah, and uh, so you had. EA go straight in the toilet that year. They and, the, and Live never came. That was the end of Live, right? They never, well, they, they, that year they had tried to rebrand it as NBA Elite, as I recall, uh, which was another huge mistake. There's, there's no Citizen uh, Kane reference in this review. I'm trying <laughs> to find it. But then also, yeah, that was that was the year that uh, you know Michael Jordan, the best basketball player ever, had never or had hadn't licensed himself to be in a game in years and years. He's he's not part of the regular players' association thing that puts him in video games and. Uh, 2K Games got him in the game that year. So there was a bunch of legendary teams. Uh, so yeah, base, and, and the, uh, yes. <laughs> I'm on board with that. Yeah. That's fine. So uh, you had, and then uh, the, the gameplay did really take it to the next level. Yeah, but you remember so. when he took out Fable 2? Yeah, that game had a dog. How many dogs were in this basketball game? Unless it had an air bud mode. It did. Did it? Everything. No. no. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, 2K11 was a great year for okay. uh, for basketball fans for <clears throat> sure. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm not doing no, great. That's fine. No. Destin, I'm going to go your way next. All you've right. Been, you've been eerily silent over there, so, contemplating. There's two games not on this list. You read off both of them now. Uh, I kind of wanted to add Limbo originally because mm. just it's it it's was so good. Kinda, it's an amazing the best live arcade, arcade game ever in my Winter opinion. of Arcade, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I figure somebody else will do that. I want Borderlands 2 on this list. Okay. It's one of the yeah, funnest Yeah, that shooters. guy. 
It's Where'd hilarious. It's fun to play with your friends. I got tons of hours. Yeah, of but I it's boring to play by yourself. I did the guide for it Hot by take. myself. I and find it, was still it so a lot of fun. boring. I had a blast. So I want that on the list. Borderlands 2. Okay. Borderlands 2. And get the PC port box off of this list. The orange box. Bye. Whoa! Oh. The but, PC so, port box? So put Borderlands 2 at like spot 4. And you can just bump off. I think PC that's legit. I, as great as the orange box was it was only really great on PC the yep. console versions I mean team who plays Team Fortress 2 on the Xbox Agreed. who, who Agreed. plays PCs <laughs> I don't play PCs great that's question. my secret PCs uh, yeah okay. computers are scary <laughs> Randy Pitchford is pleased at your selection yeah I, that was a very fun game somewhere two blocks away Andrew Goldfarb is crying right now <laughs> he is now I need somebody else to add anyway. limbo <laughs> <coughs> I just, right. I just thought. I mean, I know it's not my turn, but just so I don't forget it, come back Please. to me maybe. I just thought of a game that's not, wasn't even in the top twenty-five, but should, I, in my view, would be in my top ten. Braid. Hey, uh, oh. Gary, okay. don't worry. Oh, you're in there. You, you got, you got. <laughs> already don't worry. Yet. I didn't got mean to you. steal your thunder there. I, I, got I, you. I just, no. It just occurred to me. I was like, yeah. oh shit! Like if nobody says braid, that's a travesty. Yeah. Nah, we good. It okay. is in the yeah. sort of. But thank God someone said Holy NBA 2K11 <laughs> of live arcade. Games. But it's not even in your. It wasn't even in the top twenty-five that you were working on. That's insane. Well, yeah, Braid, Limbo, we can and uh, Shadow Complex. Yeah, Holy Trinity of live mm -hmm. arcade games, I think. Uh, so but as Mark gets ready to pick another one, I'll just rattle off a few more that, that were on, on the brain totally here. Totally ready. <laughs> uh, GTA 4, uh, Alan Wake, of course. A lot of Alan Wake fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> Marty mentioned Assassin's Creed 2. Still, still uh, the peak, probably the peak of the series until Black Flag, which isn't really there's a, I I think a thought port. Brotherhood was very good. Yeah, I thought Revelations was very good. Well, I agree. With there's that. That's <laughs> Brotherhood's that's my favorite. My opinion. Uh, you know, maybe not. They maybe don't. They don't quite belong in the list. But uh, a lot of fond memories for Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey. <gasps> yes. <laughs> and, uh, Geometry Wars. Another yes, great yeah. Geometry yeah. Wars yeah. two. Pacifism yeah. mode. Crackdown one. Uh, the Darkness. Anybody remember that? That was uh, Starbreeze. I didn't like it that much. No, I like the yeah. second what are you, one. Well, how many? Name a better game with vagina doors. I dare you. Or butthole doors. <laughs> Prey. <laughs> oh dang. The original Prey. That's, that's yeah, that's, yeah, that works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fight Night Round Three was uh, was quite oh, the revelation of the day. Yeah, that was an early 360 Gen title. Left for Dead. Left. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Left 4 yeah. Dead 2 yeah. specifically, I think, that, you know, that refined things a little bit. I just uh, went back, we just, um, I was playing Battlegrounds with some friends and, and the servers went down. They were like, well, shit, let's play something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Who, who, who saw that coming? Um, but uh, we, we all wanted to play something and we were like, well, ah, who's got, what, who, 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 out of all four of us, like, who had, did we have something where all four of us have the same yeah. thing installed? And we all had Left 4 Dead 2. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Just, and we played it, let me tell you, holds up. Hold, I yeah. believe oh, yeah. Still great. Yeah, yeah totally it's believe really it. Really uh, Ninja Gaiden 2 was, of course, because Black wasn't on 360. Uh, 2 still great. Uh, how about Halo 3 ODST? Any ODST fans oh, yeah. in the house? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Alongside <laughs> Castlevania, it's I love, fine. <laughs> I love apathy towards one of my favorite games, whatever. And, it's interactive. Uh, Dead Rising 1. We can't forget yeah. about the yeah. original Dead Rising as well. So. Good. All right. Who? Uh, Fantastic. We got a pan We got a audience member. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I don't know. I just, I just, I have to mention the orange box getting kicked off. That's. No, it's your, gotta, turn, it your turn's <laughs> coming up, Mark. <laughs> I just. Your turn's coming up. You can. Portal 2, better not move, <laughs> or I'm out of here. I mean, it's a <laughs> yeah. We're doing Beyond next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, trust me, our, P our PlayStation list was no better. No, it, it was, was it was a car. It was a disaster. All right, here we go. Ticket number four six nine. Nice. nice. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was nobody's. All right, not nice. Yeah, okay. we revoke the nice. Mark's keeping all those prizes for himself. <laughs> okay. Four eight four. It's a palindrome. Palindrome, guys. Four, eight, four. Eight, four. four. Oh. Are there people just lurking in the office somewhere? <laughs> like, what's going on here? I clear. I assume this is the second half of a ticket that was given out. Like, where are these men and women? Are they, they in the crawl spaces? They left when I took off Skyrim. And never oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> four, nine, zero. So, yay! Oh, there we go. <laughs> yes. Hi, what's your name? Hi, oh, it's Valerie. Like Welcome. 
from Vancouver, British Columbia. Excellent. Oh, Canadian. yes. Someone who's not you from know. San Francisco. All right. All right, there we go. And so the game that I like to add is an old one, but I liked it. It's Internal Sonata. It's about Chopin. Oh, okay. strong call. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I gotta get rid of something, so I'm gonna do Red Dead Red, Red Redemption. <laughs> what? Red what? Red what? Red what? <laughs> 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 you have NBA <laughs> Inferno. I also like. <laughs> and you're getting rid of Red Dead? I like how this was the opposite of Sophie's choice. It was just like, oh, Eternal Red Dead, Sonata you're was the game. <laughs> All right. Okay. During the uh, you had us and then you lost us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what, Eternal so, Sonata. What uh, what about Eternal Sonata? Where uh, did you did you love? I mean, there's a lot I, to love about it. I mean, the whole concept was. Brilliant. I love the music of that game. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it just how it worked, where it's like Chopin, like, is the end of his life. It's kind of like his dream world almost. And so I thought that was really interesting. I don't think many, I know this game. How, how many times cool. have you played it? Do you like to go back to it from time yeah, to time? Yeah, like my skin on my Xbox 360 is of Eternal Sonata. <laughs> yeah. So I'm kind of invested in it. Played yeah. about probably six times. What kind of, what kind of game was it? JRPG. Okay. It was, yeah. it was, yeah, it came out during uh, the 360 Phil and the team made at one point. A genuine fantastic push in Japan, uh, where they tried to, you know, that's e when they got. E T E R N A. That's when they got. S O N A T A. Eternal. It's a tunnel. Sonata. Uh, sorry that. <laughs> Did you <laughs> think it was Turtle Sonata? <laughs> yes. Can sorry that we have that? an illiterate staff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll work on that. I do. I do no, want to play Sonata. Turtle Sonata. Turtle Sonata. I'll play oh, that game. Yes, we did. It. I feel okay. like Turtle Sonata is just a Mario <laughs> game. <laughs> Wahoo! Uh, yeah, but uh, honestly, to me, it's... Her, oh, go. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, so that was... Uh, so they... That was Mic Microsoft signed... Uh, they had Mizuguchi. Mm -hmm. uh, there was... So they had Sakaguchi. Saka, so you lost Odyssey. You had Blue Dragon. You had Eternal Sonata. Oh, you had uh, Tales of Vesperia. No. All exclusive yeah. JRPGs at that point. And they were, they were all really good games. And it still just... They could not move the needle for the Xbox in Japan. <laughs> yeah. And so that, uh, that, was, that was sort of that. <laughs> Put your headphones on. <laughs> someone's going to fix the Red Dead crime that was just committed. I, yes. Before. It's like, this is over, right? <laughs> I'm not sure someone is. This it's is funny very because scary. right before Valerie came up, I was looking at the list and thinking about it backwards. Like, what's the one game on here that if I could like put a pin in it and say that does not move? Yeah. It was Red Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you had that pegged ahead of time when we when we met before the show. You were like, "Oh, it's." Really I mean, I think you know, yeah. there's a lot of these. I think are oh, this could be the subject of genuine debate. I think there's a couple that are just like, I mean, that's "Come your, on, that's your number one game." Would you say, right, Gary? When we were talking earlier, I've got I've got three that are jockeying for it, but Red okay. Dead is one of them. Yeah. yeah. What yeah, are the other stuff? Two? Portal Two and Mass Effect Two. But I think if if, if if I've got to pick one, it's Red Dead. There it is. And now your dreams have been crushed. I know. I Play a game I've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> it's Classic a really good Chopin. game. I'm going to look into it. That sounds it is a really good game. It's really good. Is it? Yeah. Uh, we're, I don't know. We're evaluating. Is it on? Is, is it, it backwards on, uh, compatible? Back compa yeah. I actually don't know. No, I don't know either. Is, it, is Eternal Sonata backwards compatible? It is not. That is a, that is a shame. Um, who was that? Was that is that Namkai? Namco? Namkai. Well, I combined. Uh, Namkai Bando. I think it was Namco. Yeah, yeah. If I remember right. Uh, all right. So I think is it Mark? Is it your turn? It, well, yeah. I'm, I could. Hey guys. All right. Marty, we'll go to Marty. Two off of there. <laughs> well, Gary stole my thunder earlier. I, uh, I, I, no, I you, apologize. You, you are worthy of thunder stealing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a, uh, aside from Turtle Sonata, a triple A heavy list. Even Turtle Sonata is triple A. And to me, like the 360. When I think back on it, like one of the things I think of most is XBLA in the summer of arcade. Yeah, and winter stuff. of arcade. Like, yeah, Alana. So in Australia, it's called the Winter <laughs> of Arcade because it's the upside down country. Um, but uh, no, I think of stuff like, uh, you know, like you said Shadow Complex, Limbo, Bastion, like these experiences that, what is happening <laughs> now? Is this Duck Dynasty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure is. <laughs> oh, Review it. Review <laughs> it. Review <laughs> it. There's stealth action. So, Gary, for context. Oh, funny. Uh, Wait, hold on, hold on. I'm not done watching this. <laughs> Is this a real game? So, oh, four, yeah. real four or five years ago, I, this game came out, and I said I was going to review it. 
Uh, and then I played 45 minutes of it, and the game is a very racist open world, <laughs> a, w a weirdly ambitious racist open world duck hunting game. Okay. Um, the weirdly thing was ambitious in terms of its open world. Like, I assumed it would be racist. It is. Um, the, the, well, I know that the Duck Dynasty guys are kind of racist, but like, yeah. the, the game is racist? No, I mean, they are in the game. Like, they're the titular Duck Dynasty, and so, okay. like, they are, like, them being them is the racism. Right. Uh, but, uh... I played 45 minutes of it, and then uh, my save got deleted. And I just told Dan, I'm not going to review this. But I had already said I was going to review it's it. It's an Activision game, right? It is an Activision yeah. game, yeah. Um, and so... Uh, Imagine I, work, uh, being a programmer working on that game. How do you get through the day? Alcohol, <laughs> how drugs. Do get, how do you get out of bed in the morning? Alcohol, drugs. Well, yeah. the only person that has to listen to them is the sound designer, so the programmer is probably okay. <laughs> Is a <laughs> well, but still, have, you're, like, but a still you're working as hard as any other resume. game that you could yeah. be working on. But this is the game. You know what's shocking about Duck Dynasty is there are legitimate, like, n this is not hyperbole, like seven to eight minute cutscenes that are like static shots. And it's not like AB shots. It is static shots in a kitchen of the family talking. <laughs> like renders of the family talking. Like Resident Evil 7? Like yep. seven That's minutes. That's me. It like split. <laughs> you may like be wondering how I got here. Seven minutes long. Well, it's, okay, fast. But, it's like Kojima but to, but to be fair, and I can't believe I'm actually going to defend <laughs> Duck Dynasty, the video <laughs> game, but that game's made for a certain market, Duck yeah. Dynasty fans. And if you're a Duck Dynasty fan... Maybe that's what you want. Mm -hmm. It's not for us. Yeah. Yeah. For the record, when you guys first started talking about it, and I started on the show, I had no idea what it was, and I thought that it was like another Ducktales game. <laughs> 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 I was very confused when I actually saw the website. Uh, so, anyways, uh, I'm gonna choose Braid. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, so, yes, talking about the 360, uh, you know, the summer of arcade games. The one Braid. that defines it to me is uh, Braid. Like, I'm such a huge fan of old school uh, puzzle platformers, and to me, like what Jonathan Blow did with this first game was absolutely incredible in terms of weaving together both a story that was extremely personal, especially when you get to the end. And, and oh my god, the ending just blew the me The ending away. destroys me. It's like, just you talk a about revelation like, when you realize what's actually happening. That final level and like the, the turn at the end of it just is heartbreaking. Um, and then, in, in my opinion, has some of the smartest uh, puzzle mechanics ever in a platformer that it slowly like doles out to you and allows you to learn one verb before moving on to the next, which he clearly built upon in something like The Witness, which yeah. which oh, yeah. builds upon that like foundation of language and grammar. Um, yeah. yeah, but to me, when I think back on on XBLA Summer of Arcade, like that like digital yeah. download space, that's the game I think of. And there's as much very, as I very few games that I can think of that where I could say that there is legitimate. No hyperbole genius at work here, and that yes. that game is just top to bottom genius all, yeah. way, all the way through. Yeah, completely agree. Um, I I think it's fair to say for live arcade, it's Limbo and uh, Braid are like the one oh, A and I, one I think B. They're of totally live that's live the arcade. the Mount Rushmore of arcade. Yeah. 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 Um, which means who are you killing? Okay, so NBA, Marty. <laughs> I mean, he's going to bump off Mass Effect because he's never played it. I played Mass Effect 1 all the way through. <laughs> he did. Legitimately he on did. film. He did. She was in the room the whole can, time. I can confirm, yeah. Uh, I think open world Bethesda games are very boring and very dull. And really? So I'm going to bump out Fallout 3. What? Fallout you haven't 3. even played it. I played Fallout 3. I you played have a not bit played Fallout 3. I played a little 3. bit of it. I, I argued with you about this like a week ago. I played like a, yeah, there's like a robot or a dog or something, but whatever. Get, it, there's no emotion in that <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah, good it out call. There. Burnout Paradise over Fallout 3. I yeah, love Burnout Paradise. I think Burnout Paradise is great. Well, we're gonna need uh, against it too we're gonna seconds. need the audience to fix this, Mark. I just every turn I become less of a person. <laughs> Fallout Fallout 3. <laughs> Rest in peace. All right, here we go. Four, eight, five. Yay. All right. All right. Please fix everything. Fallout 3. I will Fallout say, though, three. in your defense, Marty, when Fallout 3 first came out, it made the criminal open world RPG mistake of stopping at the end. They had to patch they, it to it, let you keep you playing. You could technically after. say the Fallout 3 Game of the Year edition because that came out on 360. All right. So you yeah. could put that in there. All right. Brain still, still bad. And then you get all the alien <laughs> DLC and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Hi, what's and your name? Lookout, I think. Mm -hmm. My name is Alexander. Welcome, Hello. Alexander. You from here? Yes, I am. Excellent. Close, close-ish. Cool. Thanks for coming. What do you? Uh, what's? What is on your mind that you want to see on this list? As a person who used a 360 um, before fully going over to PlayStation, 
I'm gonna have to bring Halo 3, take out Grand Theft Auto 5. Oh! Oh, oh my God! Uh, there are uh, bad games uh, on this. Uh, uh, I'm vomiting. <laughs> Can we talk about how the last two turns, what we did was get rid of Fallout 3 and get rid of Grand Theft Auto 5? <laughs> but NBA and Burnout is still fine. <laughs> Halo 3. Yeah. All right, yeah, let's tell, tell me about what... Obviously, we've... On 360, you know, you've got Halo 3, you've got Halo 4, you've got ODST, and, and you've got Reach as well. So what is it about 3 that you, that you love more than any of the others? I feel like with um, Halo 3, it adds a lot of options to the game itself. Um, with the customization of the maps, with the car racing you could add on to it. That's the ones I fondly remember. Forge. Uh, yeah. yeah. While, while playing the game. Also, the music, the art direction it took. That's what I feel it deserves to be in that spot. Can't argue with that. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Let's get this you know, you gentleman a prize. Bumped, you could have just bumped the NBA off the list and not removed. I think basketball is great. <laughs> <laughs> This is a very one step forward, two steps yeah. back kind of list, the way it's progressing. To, to go over the rules again, you can just add something in there and not remove Red Dead, for example. <laughs> <laughs> that is an option. Yeah. I just like how like steadfast she was about removing Red Dead. I love that. In hindsight, I'm wishing I'd save my own turn for the end. <laughs> I am shocked. First was <laughs> you planned this. Why did you not do that? You were the failsafe. Mark lost. told me and to Mark go. And Mark is first. lost. So. You were the two. You were the two-step <laughs> verification. Yeah, I, I, I failed us all. What can I say? It's not the first time or the last. Well, Dark Souls is on the list, so it's a bad <laughs> list. Uh, who's? Let's see who. Who's left? It's Mark. It's Mark. Me. Mark. Me. All right, we got to go to Mark Medina. I'm gonna create some justice here. Do you want to come over here, Mark, so we can see you on camera? No, I'm on camera. <laughs> I'm good. Hi, everybody. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, so Mass Effect sucks. Oh! <laughs> you haven't played it! <laughs> also, Kevin He's my, never played it. Kevin, my... Uh, Test is technically your boss. Uh, <laughs> He's I never played it. I've assigned it to I, him three I, times. I played Andromeda. And it was not oh, good. Yeah, that's why. That's not what's also on. that's not a 360 game. We're just talking like about Mass Effect. No, I'm, allow, so here, no. I'm dead here's, over here. I'm allowing it. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take Portal. We're gonna put it at the top. Okay. Mass Effect goes where Portal was. Okay. Oh, okay. that's okay. okay that's fine. It's still on the list. Whew, okay. Because Portal 2 is just. I dare to say any game is perfect. I I would. I would say Portal was 2 actually is just probably about to say that. perfect. Whenever someone asks me what the Wait, so you game is, I say Portal. So you didn't introduce, you just moved Portal 2 up the list. That was yes. Yeah. Yeah. Portal it 2 belongs at number move. one. Okay. Yep. Uh, Portal 2 is fantastic. One of the greatest <laughs> co op modes ever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Its own uh, unique co op mode. A game is just amazing for Gary, a, as a writer, you've got to have a, a pretty soft spot in your heart and an appreciation for, for Portal 2. One of the best written games. Uh, in recent memories. Yeah, Valve uh, had, they, I, mean, I, I actually think, I mean, they're, they're rightly celebrated across the board in all disciplines, gameplay design, you know, everything they do is, is great. I don't think they get enough credit for their writing. They do tremendous, uh, you know, GLaDOS and uh, just incredible characterization and, you know, hilarious as well, really funny. They made me love a potato. So. Yeah, exactly. Portal yeah. 2 was even funnier than, than the first one. Uh, you know, Stephen Merchant's fantastic in it. Uh, yeah, really John awesome. yeah, just yeah. Re just really, really well. Really, really well done. There's so many brilliant little details in that game. I actually, it, it, I only ever played it through once. I should play through again, and I feel like Me too, I, on a second t go through, I'd probably catch a lot of things I didn't catch first time. Yeah. Did I you always. Play uh, oh, did yeah, you play co-op? Yeah. 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 Me too. Um, I credit Portal Two is one of the two games I credit with getting this job or getting into the industry. Um, it was Portal Two and Mortal Kombat that I like. I fell out of games for a little bit. I moved to the city. I wanted a job in games journalism. Uh, ended up working in a coffee shop for a couple of years. Nothing panned out. I was, and then got back into it with uh, Mortal Co Mortal Kombat Nine, like the reboot, and Portal Two, and played a ton of them for like two or three weeks. And then by happenstance, the the guy who ended up hiring me came to my coffee shop, and I was talking up and when I had my interview those were the two things when they were like what are you playing and I was like I'm playing these two things and they're like great these are the two biggest games on the site right now <laughs> and if it were a month earlier I'd be like I'm uh, playing Banjo-Kazooie and they're like that game's <laughs> from 20 years ago why are you talking about that game so I never would have pegged you as a Mortal Kombat guy yeah I was playing a ton of it with my ex at the time yeah <laughs>
Right? If, you, if, you, if, if you hit the buttons, the, the, the violence happens. Fatalities yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. Portal 2 is definitely, it, it, to me, there's a lot of the same things apply as Braid. Where I feel like when I play a game like that, as I remember, there's two things going on at once. Kind of emotionally, I'm having a great gameplay experience. You know, kind of the frustration of not, you're not being able to figure out a puzzle and then the catharsis when you solve it and you go, great, on to the next mm -hmm. thing and you're having a great gameplay experience. But there's also, for me at least, a kind of parallel track of just intellectually just marveling at the ingenuity of all constantly oh my god how did they how did they think that up like how yeah. these puzzles were created it just mm -hmm. you're Absolutely. constantly in awe of how, how of how fiendish the design is yeah eric walpaw and chet Falasek were yeah the, the Genie, absolutely I'm brilliant i'm totally cool with that being number one um, as am i so we have number it's two. it's a totally legit number choice for number yeah. one yeah. so we have number two halo three <laughs> number three burnout paradise number four borderlands two number five braid number six well, bioshock number seven gears of war two best gears of war uh, number eight, Eternal Sonata. Number nine, Mass Effect trilogy, and number ten, NBA. I mean, I feel yeah. like, uh, I feel like, even though this might not be in the rules, everyone's here. I feel like we should give someone out there the final say to do one more. Yeah, and not Mark Medina. That, yeah, well, I made that on purpose. Well, Portal Two. <laughs> yeah, we got one more audience. Yeah, member. let's do okay. it. All right, here we go. Please save us. <laughs> it's it's on you to fix this. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, nothing can fix this. Four. Did I just hear somebody say knock off <laughs> Portal 2? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Four, seven, one. Anybody? Oh, yes. Uh, oh, here we go. Come on up. A lot of pressure on this, I'm not going to lie. Bring back Fallout. To be honest, I heard yeah, you say the D word. Oh, yeah, I heard you say the D word. It's not, not the, the second one. No, it was. I know. All right, what is your name, know. sir? Uh, my name's Oliver. Welcome, uh, Oliver. You from, from here? No, uh, Burbank, California. Excellent. Oh, Welcome. Hey. Thanks for That's coming. That's where Kevin up. Eubanks is from. Great to be here. Uh, I think That's I need nice to, uh, Hot take. to write the ship a little here. Um, I'm going to remove NBA 2K11. Good. Uh, Good. Tippy, <laughs> tippy top of the list. I'm going to throw Alan Wake. Like, oh, okay. That game for me, just incredible narrative design. <clears throat> I, I love the Twin Peaks aesthetics of it. Uh, Anything Sam Lake, I'm a big fan of, and that game, probably the best like 12, 15 hours I spent that whole generation. Well, if, completely if, agree. If Sam Lake were here right now, he would probably appreciate that Alan Wake ended up on the list and Red Dead Redemption, the game that murdered Alan Wake when it came out at the same yeah, don't, exact uh, time. Turns out, don't release your game <laughs> in the same time as a Rockstar game. Uh, Lana, like what are your thoughts man. on Alan Wake? No comment. It's trash. <laughs> You're on a podcast. You have to have a comment. No, I hate Alan Wake uh, quite passionately. As a game that I finished and then like played another half of, the reason I hate it is because Alan sucks. He's like, I hate my stupid wife that I have to go find this whole game. Also, the game will like you'll get into an area and then it'll like show you the area and then zoom in on a ladder. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. There's a ladder there that I'm supposed to walk up. Why do you keep condescending me this whole fucking game? I'm sorry for the swears. I feel very passionately <laughs> about this game. I, I didn't know the what ladders were before that game, so that was, oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that was my entry. <laughs> no, I understand that then. Yeah. I'm Did sorry. you guys have a lot of ladders growing up? Because in America, <laughs> so we don't have many. a ton of ladders. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just found a uh, writing grating. It's it's not a lake. It's an ocean. <laughs> okay. Was that a Sam Lake thing? Yeah. Oh. You, Mark, you didn't finish the game either. That was the litmus no, test. I absolutely the game. shut it. <laughs> Uh, At least I understand Alan Wake being on the list. NBA 2K, not so I can, I can allow Alan. I'm, I can understand. Same with plugs. Same with plugs. Sure. Uh, Go for it. Got a review of it. YouTube channel, Game Room Hero. Check it out. You got you to plug where you can. I can accept that. Yeah. Learn from the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, did we do it, Mark? We did it. Wait, this, that, that's, that's the list? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Official I mean, video on like IGN. A, do we get like a Tomorrow. one last like a Deus Ex Machina like we all come yeah, together? And all now that you mention it, one? yeah, just put Paul uh, back and we're good. Actually, uh, we do have a late a late uh, entry on the list. Uh, go ahead and roll the uh, video. Okay. I actually didn't know this was a thing. <laughs> hey IGN, it's Larry Herb Xbox Live's Major Nelson. I just want to give you a shout out and say what's up. Really enjoy your show. Really enjoy IGN podcast unlocked. I've been on the show before. I think I need to come on again. So I know you guys were talking about your top games from 360 era. You know me. I love the Xbox 360. And uh, probably going to have to say Red Dead Redemption. Oh, yes! Yeah. 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 For Xbox One. Looking forward to the next Thank Red Dead. Thank you. So anyway, IGN, hope you guys have a great uh, 2018. See you later. Look Larry with the late Wayne. save. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, was this like orchestrated? <laughs> 
Well, Cause no, that worked out. No, that was live. That worked out I, extremely yeah. well. That was clearly not. <laughs> Wait, does that mean Mass Effect's not on the list anymore? No, it's still no, there. No, you kicked off uh, Alan oh. Wake. Alan Wake's Sorry. gone. Good job, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate that. He just got back to his seat, and we already bumped <laughs> Alan Wake off the list. He barely sat down. He barely plugged his YouTube channel. <laughs> but I feel like, like Larry, he would he would have been like, well, let's find out what's like the most third party game. On this yeah. list, and he would have been like, "Let's get that one off." That yeah, was... that's that's a good point. He did yeah. not go first party. I appreciate yeah. that. No, that, that's good. The fact that Red Dead got bumped off was just the most beautiful thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> everyone's like, "Oh, is someone gonna come in at the end and save it?" There you go. That's All right. Good. So Red for uh, for the benefit of podcast listeners later, we have. Red Dead Redemption at number one, the best 360 game of all time, according to this room. Portal 2 at number two. Halo 3 at number three. Burnout Paradise, which may ver well, no, it's no, the that's fifth. Burnout it's five. the fifth. Yeah, yeah. So we're so close. Yeah. Uh, Borderlands 2, then Braid, Bioshock, Gears of War 2, Eternal Sonata, and the Mass Effect trilogy cheating in at number 10. <laughs> cheating. There were all three games in one. Yeah. It was just like we cheated it in the actual list that's on IGN.com. So we did it. Good job, everybody. Uh, it was boy. an okay job. It was fine. The 360, yeah, not only, such, not only a great console, but it had you know, such a, what historically has been an unusually long lifespan mm -hmm. that yeah. we got even more great games than we would have normally gotten had it been just a five-year console cycle so we did it uh are we done mark did it. we're gonna we'll hang out we'll say we'll we'll just see if anybody do we want to do like a q a or anything or i mean it's 7:30, but it's, it's your show well, did anybody did everybody get their q a's out at the panel at the uh first friday panel earlier does anybody want to if you have a q a uh, raise your we're hand we're here we're here. You have a not? question and no, answer. I guess there's some hand. people. Okay, all right. It's if you've got, we'll do, we'll, we can do this premiere for a little, little, little bit. If you want, okay. come on over to this come side. Come on over the line up right here, and we'll treat it like a Comic Con panel. Yeah. If you want to ask us anything, uh, like Destin, why have you never played Mass Effect as a woman? You could ask him. No, that. I have. Just not through the entirety of the game. <laughs> and I played Andromeda as a female. That's true. You did, but I never finished that game because <laughs> it was kind of rough. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right I'm Marty's that. quitting. Yeah. He's, quit he'll be back. <laughs> He's right. getting alcohol. He needs to lose after water. that. Lens. Okay. What's your name, Putty? But I don't know what, what? I said. Did you say Putty? Know. Buddy. Amanda, watch Putty. out. I'm a very dry mouth. <laughs> I've been talking all day. <laughs> Hi, my name's George. Welcome. How's it going? I was in one of the IGN Facebook groups earlier, and I saw someone praising Xbox One for its backwards compatibility, and I agreed with that. I thought that was... A really cool thing for them to do but a whole bunch of the comments uh, were like yeah it's great that you bought a brand new video game system to play old games and I was wondering why you think games get that rap like no one would knock someone for reading kind of Monte Cristo on an iPad no one would knock someone for getting like the 4k transfer of Casablanca for uh, blu-ray so why are games so susceptible we just had this conversation like a couple of hours ago uh, yeah. with Dan Stapleton um, that that specifically is a console wars thing that it's people trying to validate their purchases. Like that's all I think console wars really comes from is someone being like, yeah, but the Xbox doesn't have exclusives right now. Therefore, I was correct for buying a PlayStation rather than everyone just being happy with what they bought. Like that I really think is the core of that. It's just they want people to tell you that they bought the right thing and they want to argue about it. I think part of it might also be a desire for more uh, platform exclusives that are new and maybe they see that as a band-aid, so they're not quite getting an additional value that they would, well, I mean, it is an additional value, but sure. I think they want another avenue to support their brand. Because if he was in a Facebook group, was it the Unlock group? Uh, it was Unlock, GameScoop, Beyond, like one, I can't remember which one, sorry. He's in them all, that's good. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, was, I would be curious to know which group specifically that was in. Because if, <laughs> so if you're banning that user. If it was in the yeah. PlayStation group, that kind of makes sense, but if it's in the Xbox group, I don't know why they would be mad about yeah. it. It's weird, I... I sure. uh -huh. I do think that does exist in some movies. Like, you see that, especially with Marvel and DC. Like, you see ride or die DC fans who are, like, upset anytime a Marvel movie does well or upset anytime, like, you give criticism towards something like Suicide Squad. Uh, that being said, you never, clearly never, no one's like, I only read Penguin books. <laughs> Not books about penguins, but, like, the penguin publisher, publisher, Penguin yeah. Publisher. Mm -hmm. Or, like, I only listen to Columbia music because I don't know which record labels any one is signed to. Um, I like to think it's because video games are in a relative infancy. 
in terms of yeah. like especially in comparison to other mediums um yeah, I don't know, but I would also agree with Alana. A lot of it is a there is a barrier to entry in video games that you don't have in other art. Like you need to buy the thing to play the thing. You don't need to buy a book reader or a movie watcher or anything like that. You can just go and consume a single That's thing. A and so point. I think people do try to validate a purchase, whereas most of us who clearly love games and are fortunate enough to be able to afford and, and buy most of the consoles are mm -hmm. kind of fine with it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, George. Shout out to George. It him. It him. Titular George. <laughs> oh, how's it going? Hi. Good. What's your name? My name is Daniel. Welcome, hey, Daniel. Daniel. Um, I have a very simple question because I honestly thought 2017 as a whole was one of the best years of gaming in a long time. And I, I still love the Xbox, even though other consoles like the PlayStation and Nintendo got a lot of credit. I think the Xbox does deserve some kind of credit for 2017. So very simple question. What was your favorite game from last year? Ooh. Xbox, uh, like Gary? Xbox Let's go to, let go to Gary with it first. Favorite game? Probably Battlegrounds. It's the, I mean, I have it's the game I have by far the most hours in. Yeah. You mean PUBG? Yeah, yeah PUBG. Xbox, Whatever you want to call it. Obviously, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, it, it, it counts as Xbox. You, got, you play it on Xbox. Oh, wait, no, it has to be an Xbox game. That is okay. an Xbox game now. Well, yeah, but well, I haven't yeah, played it on the Xbox, so I don't think it, it counts. I, I've been playing on PC. Uh, for Xbox, um... I would say probably, um, it's gonna, I mean, it, it, just because I had a ton of fun with it and it's going to sound like a weird choice because it wasn't like a massively celebrated game, but Overcooked is, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Ra that if counts. you're playing that with like people, like over the holidays we had, um, you know, my family visiting and me and my wife and my dad and my, I've got like my daughter who's five and my dad who's 70 and, and they've both got about as much experience of video games sitting there and just having a riot and playing That's it. Great. And if, you've, yeah, if anyone's that. ever played Overcooked with a group of four, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just an absolute riot, and we just enjoy the hell out of that game. Yeah, fantastic. What do you say, Alana? Uh, my game of the year was Zelda, closely followed by Wolfenstein 2. You should play it if you haven't. Uh, my favorite Xbox game was Cuphead. It's a very simple answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Lily. Uh, Lily knows what's up. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my favorite game of last year was Persona 5, but then uh, number two was Wolfenstein. And so I would say that Wolfenstein, that's going to be one of the most memorable shooter campaigns of literally ever i had someone moment. tweet me today and be like oh i got to that moment in wolfenstein i was there. like oh which one spoilers all <laughs> those moments are that moment i was like oh, oh the first one okay yeah sorry i have to redo mine all right because i just remembered the real answer lego city undercover <laughs> and oh. it's so you, much you, better you, than it was on you you, so you laugh but it's a it's fantastic so game and the lego games in general just because they're lego games don't get enough credit but if you True. play those games they are masterfully designed mm -hmm. and full of wonder and great little moments of ingenuity and terrific funny. humor it's so yeah. funny and it's yeah. hilarious and just brilliant i loved it lego city undercover like it's legitimately one game. of the best Grand Theft Auto inspired games. Yes, like, it's, it's up. Yeah, and again, down. it doesn't get the credit because of yeah. what it is. But it's the, the like the light. Have you played all the way to the end? Yeah, I the played last it, I, level I believe, when you yeah. when you're escaping from a collapsing space station yeah, so and good. falling to Earth. You think this is a Lego game? But yeah. it has this epic orchestral music. It's just it's so good, so good. Just uh, just since Alana already said uh, Cuphead, <laughs> I will say the times that I played Sea of Thieves in That's 2017, right. which was a few times because I I. Did not smile more than I with a video game than I yeah. did, other than Mario Odyssey, which just wasn't on Xbox. Like we at E3 last year, that was the thing I thought about all week. Yeah, yeah. was when we when we all when we all played uh, Sea of Thieves together, and then a little bit more in the in the alpha here in the fall. So yeah. I can't wait to play more. Destin. Oh, uh, so for last year, I think I think last year was kind of a uh, Xbox had some big successes like Halo Wars two and such. Uh, I played a lot of uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, PUBG. I have like 250 hours in that game last year. Uh, and then one surprising entry on Xbox, though, was Injustice 2. And then with the Xbox really? One X enhancements, it made it look stunningly better. I was yep. amazed at how well it ran at 4K and how good all the characters look. And they're adding the Ninja Turtles, so that's awesome. <laughs> I think it's like, the best uh, fighting game story. And I love fighting games. I think it's just the best campaign of any fighting game. Yeah. Did it, you ever uh, play Super Smash Brothers Brawl? Yeah. <laughs> that story was bad. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So Injustice 2, and just overall for the Xbox, I think this was sort of a year for them to sort of clear the slate, launch a new console, and go into 2018 with some steam behind them with the PUBG launch. And I think they're just going to do well this year. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be the plan. Thank you very much. Yeah. Daniel, what was your, wait, what was your favorite game? Real quick. Um, I have to echo Elena on that one. Cuphead, I adore that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No matter how many times it kicked my butt, I just went back to it over and over because I wanted to see what's next. And just the, 
amount of effort put into it, I just couldn't stop. It's a I adore game. Yeah, it's yep. just, it's just genius. I, I'm yeah. so glad it's been winning <laughs> so many awards oh, from yeah. all different publications. Rightfully just, deserved. Too. Yeah, it's yeah. so great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, it was just announced today as uh, one of the Games of the Year nominees for at uh, Dice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, deserving. Yeah, absolutely. Which is so insane to think that like uh, we were at the Game Awards and it winning. I think it was art, uh, art direction. direction. Yeah. But just alongside stuff oh. like Zelda Persona Horizon, Horizon Persona, Persona yeah. like and, and Destiny Two. Yeah, like what a like. I don't know, what a phenomenal thing for such a it small won't, I mean, it won't win because Zelda studio. will just continue to sweep everything as it should. But it's, you know, to be even if to be even, even in the conversation with games with of Zelda. That, yeah. Yeah. No. Man, yeah. 2017, like, in the grand scheme of things, awful year. Amazing year for games. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Historically bad year. <laughs> Video games, great year. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I mean. That's when you want the best video games when the rest of everything sucks. <laughs> true. Right? For the love of great Christ, point. give me escapism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello. Hi. How's it going? All right. Hello. What's your name? Uh, I'm Alex. I'm the loud guy from the back of the room. Welcome. Uh, so, I didn't get picked for the list. Uh, <laughs> He's still back there. <laughs> I think that was bad. <laughs> Alexio clapping. <laughs> uh, so I didn't get picked for the list. So I'd like to work my uh, list change into a question. <laughs> uh, I, like, I, I like what's going I on. I like here. your dedication to the yeah. segment. Yeah, you know. You're 15 minutes. You got to use it, right? Yeah. Uh, so what I wanted to do was take off Fallout 3 and put on Dishonored. Um, and my question is, do we give open world games too much credit? Uh, because you have a game like Fallout 3, and I think it's kind of bland, it's kind of boring, but everybody talks about how it's this great uh, world building game, whereas I think there aren't enough things to really poke. And uh, I don't know, it kind of just makes me sad and bored, which is a, a destructive combination. Whereas in Dishonored, um, you kind of have this rich world that you uh, learn about just by seeing it and uh, walking around it. I mean, I, I think there's something to that in sure. the sense of, I, I know I personally have been getting pretty burned out on open world games in general because everything's an open world because that's just the publishers follow trends and that's how it goes. Because I think with a lot of open world games, uh, even really good ones like Watch Dogs, the, the, you know, you get, in order to be a jack of all trades, you're often a master of none. And so I, I tend to find that, that the, the quest and the things I'm doing just start to all blend together mm -hmm. into, into you know, non-distinct activities. And it takes, for me lately, just personally, it takes a really special open world game to kind of break through that. I mean, this isn't recent, but uh, Sunset Overdrive did an amazing job of that for me, of making me feel like each thing I was doing was, was very mm -hmm. different and unique and fun. And, uh, that's why, I mean, Rockstar's been the best at it, and I, I can't wait for, for Red Dead 2, as I'm sure Gary and, and the rest of the, most everybody in here can't. So, yeah I, yeah, I do think there's something to that, personally. Yeah, being able to marry breadth and depth is something that very few artists have been able to capture. I think that's like a sort of a white whale for a lot of people. You can make the biggest game ever, but if, you know, if there's not a lot of interesting thi uh, things to do in it, then why explore that? Yep. Uh, this is like super anecdotal, but I think it depends or, or is very personal. Like I took Skyrim off that list, but I adore Fallout 3. Uh, some people that'll be Phantom Pain, some people that'll be The Witcher 3. So I definitely think that there are open worlds that depend on which individual specifically wants them. Um, I, I don't think we necessarily overcredit them. I think that they are just personal experiences. Like even though I love fantasy books, Skyrim just never grabbed me. Uh, I just never felt that way about it. But I could play hours and hours of Fallout 3, and I right. did. And I'm so. kind of and, and I'm I didn't the like Fallout 4 that much. I've so. always yeah. preferred the Elder Scrolls yeah. games to the Fallout games. I think it first. varies yeah. pretty much. Awesome. Right. Thanks so cool. much. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. How's it going? Hello. It's going pretty good. It's Borderlands doing? 2 guy slash Anthem Dude. Someone we love you. Someone had a bright idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, so, weird question. But I can distinctly remember the fond, like, nostalgia moments of my past where I'm like, this is what made me like video games. And now, all the games that are coming out, constant lines, lineup of games, I don't know what the future generations will be able to look back to and go, that was the game that got me introduced to gaming that made me like video games. I was wondering what you guys think would be any kid who grows up 10 years from now can point back to and go, that moment with my family, with my si brother or sister, that's what made me love this genre. I'm still having those moments. Every year, multiple times a year, I have those moments where I'm like, I love video games because of this. Like, this year it was Zelda. When there was three of us in the office playing it, we would pull each other into meeting rooms and be like, 
oh my God, look what I found. Or this amazing thing happened. And it was like me staying here until 6 a.m. one night with Jose, like just playing that game. I was playing it handheld and he was playing it on a projector. And it was just like the best. So I had that last year, 2017. And, and 2016 for me, it was that was inside. Well, mine, right? mine was just, the oh, witness. Yeah, me too. Yeah. That was my favorite yeah. game last year. Yeah, I mean, I, I still have those moments constantly. So I think that I will be nostalgic about Zelda. I think I will be nostalgic about The Witness. Like I think that those still exist. So I imagine in the same thing applies for kids. But those are games where nostalgic nostalgic for as adults I think what he was maybe what you were getting to I don't want to put words in your mouth where like uh, you know we're of varying ages on here but I totally remember like uh, when I was five getting a Super Nintendo because my older brother you know finally got one and playing Mario World and then slowly weaning on to stuff like Earthbound and Metroid and Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy 6 and those are the games that made me not only fall in love with games but also like look at them as more than just toys, but as things I wanted to dig deep into. Mm. So I don't know, what are those games? I think for... I'm cool cool with the words in my mouth part. Okay, cool, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, uh, we're going to see more mobile game entries, yeah. just because that is a whole genre that a lot of children are exposed to sure, today. Yeah. You see kids playing on iPads and iPhones all the time. Uh, Clash of Clans mm-hmm. is a huge game that a lot of people and are into at a young yeah. age. And Minecraft is going to be. Yeah, and oh. Minecraft, yeah, yeah, and then like a blockbuster like Grand Theft Auto, where you talk about an older sibling getting a younger sibling into a game. Like It's kind of like, oh, I'm not supposed to know about this, so they'll be intrigued by it. And also, Steam games. Yeah. There was something like, what was it, 7,000 Steam games last year, or was it 700? Last week. Yeah. Last week, <laughs> yeah. Well, so during like this podcast, there were seven thousand. Yeah. So that is a really low bar to entry if you don't have a lot of cash and you're younger, and like yeah. maybe you, that's your allowance. You get to buy some Steam games yeah. or something. So like you, that. you you said you were playing Overcooked with your daughter and with your dad. Like, yeah. do you also want to show her the stuff you grew up with? Do you think that's too obtuse? Uh, no, we got an NES Classic, and yeah. she loved those games because I think one of the nice things about being that young is you're not. Uh, there's no snobbery about production values. Like, it's, just, yeah. it's all good to you, right? She doesn't look at um, uh, Super Mario, the original Super Mario Brothers, and think that's somehow lesser than Super Mario Odyssey. She enjoys both of those equally, mm-hmm. and I'm actually kind of envious of that. Yeah. How great would it be to be able to see everything the way it, the, the way it is? You know, th- I mean, those games are, they certainly were at their time as as good as, I mean, at, at the time in Mario, the original Mario, it was the apex was the best game there was mm-hmm. and now super mario odyssey arguably is that for yeah. this generation uh but that's actually kind of nice so we will it, i think as we get older it's harder for us to go back and engage like you, it's hard to go back and play an atari 2600 game now they did they just have not aged well like mm-hmm. they are real they're just bad now but i loved them when i was a kid but that's a nice it's a, one of the nice things about the innocence of being a, a young kid is you don't look at that and go you don't look at the original super mario brothers or dr mario or the original Castlevania, anything that was on that system and go, these graphics look kind of crappy because they just don't have that, that frame of reference. Yeah. In the same way, like making my, 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 um, my daughter loves, um, uh, you know, high-end CG animation on Netflix, but she also loves like old Tom and Jerry mm-hmm. cartoons and wrote like her favorite thing is Roadrunner. She loves oh. Roadrunner. <laughs> yeah. And again, that's obviously <laughs> very dated now, but it's still brilliant. Mm-hmm. And my kid is like laughing her head off and I'm going along with her going, yeah, like Roadrunner is still awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I, I think that's, that's nice and I, I think it's, I kind of regret, I'm sad about the fact that I can't quite reconnect uh, nostalgia, people say nostalgia ain't what it used to be and it's true, it's like you go back and look at the, a, lot of, a lot of those older games that I, rem- I remember from my youth, I remember that I, when I go back and play them I'm like, I kind of wish I just left that as a memory because I go back and yeah. the memory's refreshed but it's not as good as you remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, awesome, thank you very much and let's see, how we got, hopefully we can get through these last few here. Hi, how are you? Hello. Hey, I'm doing good. The sun? I think well, you're good. Yeah. Okay, good. Hey, my name is Diodonis. Um, I'm an on-air personality for What's With Millennials podcast, where we talk about pop culture, technology, and media. And uh, my question is, um, if you could have a beer with any character, who would it be? A video game character? Yes. Commander Shepard. Either, male or female, I don't care. <laughs> Actually, female. <laughs> Destin is single, everybody. <laughs> Hmm. I, a game that did not get brought up in our 360 list, which I wish could have, was Catherine. And oh, I would say, yeah. <laughs> so good. Banjo. I'm not going to drink with a bear. Also, if I which drink Catherine? with a bear, he would probably bite me. K or C, Catherine. Or, uh, neither. I would drink at the bar with the bartender. <laughs> and I won't spoil it. The bartender is also someone very famous in history. Uh, but he knows a lot about booze, and I feel like I would like pal up with that bartender yeah, in, in Catherine. Also, if you played that game, that's a weird choice. 
So think, <laughs> think about who that man is, and that's who I drink with. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> from any of the Batman Arkham games, I don't want to have a beer with Batman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good I'll choice. I'll ask you, what's your deal? <laughs> Why do you keep doing this? What about Hot Commissioner Gordon in those games? <laughs> Barrett tweeted out some pictures of Hot Commissioner yeah, Gordon the other day because he's playing through Arkham. Thick with two C's. Yeah, he's a yeah, he's a two C thick. Um, I, because it's in my head right now, I want to say BJ from Wolfenstein. Like I think he's a really well written character. Careful. Also, he has Careful. such an awesome drinking scene yeah. where he like has just had enough and then he just goes like nonstop. It's great, and he falls down. Yeah, he's I feel wonderful. like there are also like a lot of characters in Fallout that I could pick. Like this, this is a good question. It's tough. Get Me? It. Yeah. I just I struggled to find an answer for this, so th this is just one that I've grabbed at, but I feel like it's a decent answer. It's uh, Dr. Chakwas from the Mass Effect mm. games. Oh, oh yeah. Solid call. Because weirdly, I don't know why, we, things, it's weird the things that stick out in your memory. There's, there are scenes in, in Mass Effect when you can just go, you go out around the Normandy and just chat mm -hmm. with other characters, and I just, for some reason, always remember scenes when I'm just sitting with Dr. Chat and just like shooting the shit with her. And she was like worldly and interesting and just like you would, I just, I wanted to keep the, the conversation would end and I'm like, no, 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 can I do it again? And she was like, I'm done talking to you now. I'm like, no, no, I want to, I just thought she was a really interesting I'm character. glad you didn't say Ashley, so. <laughs> you know what, most of my playthrough, Ashley was great. Yeah, and then you went and spoke to her on the Normandy and she said something racist. And then she became so racist, so it turns out, don't talk to Ashley yeah. that did you, much. Did you do the quest racist? with Dr. Chakwas? What's that? To drink with her? You can do it in uh, three, I think. Yeah, I, I, I would sit in the medical bay and just and Drinking just and just and just exhaust the dialogue tree, <laughs> and then be sad when it was over and go back to the game. Yeah. Those think, are great, so, great subtle moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Wait, also a secret answer. Um, uh, I want to go to Manny Calaveras Bar from uh, Green oh. Fandango. Oh. I want to go. I want to go to the bar in Green oh, Fandango. I should have said Guybrush Three. Ah, that's, that's also a good answer. one. Sorry. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm really nervous. I'm sorry. No worries. No, What's fine. your name? Uh, my name is Darren Vega. Um, Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to you guys and um, everyone at IGN for having us here. Like, thank you. Of course. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah. Mark Medina. And, yeah, Mark Medina. Together. It's all Mark. Organizing this awesome thing. Um, I'm sorry. I'm like my heart is pounding right now. No, don't worry about <laughs> that it. That is awesome. Like, it's like this is like my dream to like come talk to you guys. Maybe even be on the show and work at IGN. You're on Guess what? You're, you're on, on the show. show. Yeah. You're on the show. Yeah. Did it. Right. Um. So um, my question is um. I just want to know how you, you guys got uh, into the gaming industry um, or how you got into IGN. Because me, um, it's my dream to work here. Um, and I'm not sure where to start. I'm in college. And I don't know what like content I should create. I, I have a YouTube channel. I like to create reviews. And I love the podcast here. I, it's my dream to like be as one of the panelists. But I just want to know how you guys got into um, IGN, the gaming industry, and what kind of content um, and what tips you would give to me. Great. Let's give the quick, the speed round versions of our uh -huh. of our backstories. Uh, I guess I can go first. I so I was just lucky that I n had this weird laser focus. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with myself at, in, by high school, and so I went to journalism school, got a journalism degree, and of course back then when magazines were still prevalent and websites were like gaming websites were a new thing, I uh, I just sent. I just sent a resume and a letter out to every gaming publication I could think of. Uh, you know, did writing samples. I wrote for for free for uh, this website called the Adrenaline Vault, which I'm sure is not around anymore. And it's the the simple advice for me is: you said you have a YouTube channel, just just write and make videos and yep. uh, uh, and analyze them. Learn, you know, did, do you like them? Have, have other people you know look at them. Just it, it really is. It's a practice thing and critique yourself. Uh, and it, it literally does not matter if no one ever sees it, because it's for you. It's for you to hone your craft and get better, and the day will come where there maybe there's a job opening here, and you've polished yourself up enough where you can say, here's my application, here's my YouTube page, and we'll go take a look at it and, and go from there. So that's, that's my super turbo I'm going to jump off that, because my story's not that similar. I also studied journalism. I started as a freelance, uh, well, a volunteer writer, so I was writing for free just in my spare time, and then I started as a freelance writer, and then I eventually got part-time work while also having a YouTube channel, and then I started working on community radio and got to paid radio, so it was all just like, do things for free, and then just build up. And a lot of volunteering for sites who like didn't have videos or like popular Facebook pages about video games, and I was like, hey, do you want weekly news videos? And I just did that, so that's basically how I did it, yeah. Gary? I came up in the 8-bit era. I uh, grew up uh, playing Sinclair Spectrum and Commodore 64 games. I read it magazines like Zap64 and Commodore User. I wanted to be one of those guys. So I typed up a bunch of you know mock reviews of, of Commodore 64 games that I had played. 
and snail mailed them into the magazine and pestered them until they let me come in for an interview. And I don't think they were that interested in, I was like a you know, skinny, spotty 15 year old kid. I don't think that interested me, but I had saved up all my uh, paper out money to buy an Amiga 500, like the week it came out, I couldn't wait to get one. And I'd mentioned that I had one and they were like, you have an Amiga at home? And it was so new, they didn't even have one in the office yet. And so they gave me a stack <laughs> of Amiga games to take home and review. And that's how I, they say it's often, it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> and um, that was certainly true in, in my case. In terms of advice, uh, I, I would just kind of build on what a couple of people here have said. Yeah, you can go create your own, there's no barrier anymore, right? You create, anyone can create a, a YouTube channel and, and get started. But you don't need to think of that, that as in terms of like, how do I get to a point where I can get a job at an IGN or a GameSpot or a giant bomb, that's a valid way in, but you can just do your own thing. You know, look, you, you, you can just, you can be a Yahtzee or an angry video game nerd or a Jim Sterling or one of these guys that just does their own thing independent of any, um, you know, corporate entity and just be your own boss. You don't have to be as yelly as those. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it certainly helps. <laughs> Say that as someone who loves Jim. Dr drama helps. Um, yeah. I, you know, those are just the first few people that jumped on my. I, there is a whole parallel track now, obviously, of um, and there's a couple that I deliberately didn't mention because they really annoy me, but they're very successful. But you can do that. You can, you, you don't need to. You can get a job at IGN, and it's a, a wonderful thing to do. But you don't need to get a job at a company. You can just be your own company and create your own media empire. That's the beauty of the age yeah, we live and in. And there's no need to. There, don't be afraid to fail because it's you're you're going to be bad at first. I was horrible on camera at first. Yeah, I like, always want to say I got rejected a bunch of times. Like, everyone just assumes you got every job. There were tons of jobs that I didn't get. Like, literally one of them was because I was a woman. They were like, we don't want a girl game to ruin our image. I had to, like, work through that wow. kind of thing. Like, it was it was hard, and I got rejected millions of times, and it took, uh, I think, s uh, five years before I got uh, to IGN, and, and four years of, you know, going paycheck to paycheck, flying to Sydney to network with people, like, spending all of my money. Like, I invested my entire life and all of my time into doing this. So it was really hard. And I had a really supportive family, which was awesome, but it's totally doable. You just have to work really hard at it. So you're already making YouTube videos. That's great. Make the stuff that you want to see that doesn't exist. Don't just copy what everybody else is doing. Try and have your own unique voice. And that's what Jim Sterling has done. And that is what the Angry Video Game Nerd has done. By the way, that guy is actually super timid. He's playing a character. So's Yahtzee. They all are. Yeah, and he so's used to do Yahtzee. trivia in Brisbane, Australia, where I'm from, and he's super shy. Is like, trivia yeah. better than They're mine? all like that. And he's not all, everything has ah. to be. And not everything has to be video. People still like to read things Absolutely. as well. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you know, just put video. You can put re reviews up on a blog and I started on Tumblr. Uh, bring them to people's attention. I mean, I know video is like the cool thing now, but if you're not comfortable um, on camera, if that's not your your forte, then uh, one way or another, you're going to have to write. Uh, but if the, if, the, if the performance part is not. Uh, something that you feel that you're good or comfortable with, just just you know, write good old-fashioned game reviews for people to read. Cool. I love you, Marty, but I want to try and. He technically get out of already here. said his earlier. Thankfully. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, explain. Yeah, it. we're. Uh, I want to get out. Of, get done as close to eight as possible. Yeah. So we'll. He did. We'll, looks like the line. I, I'm. I'm just going to interject. What real quick is that you were super nervous to talk on the podcast, and your your dream is to work here. I literally, that was me two years ago. You also came, didn't seem nervous I mean, at all for the record. I, yeah, you totally you did didn't not, seem nervous. Yeah, also, yeah. like I think I, I literally met Mark at one of these things, yeah. like right by that I came to NBC Live two years ago, sat right over there, got to ask a question my wife was here. I was super nervous about asking. I was way more nervous than you were. So all I'm going to say is uh, follow your dreams because now I'm here. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go. Yeah, we'll go to those last few quickly here. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Really? Also nervous. <clears throat> no worries. What's um, your name? Paris. Hi. Awesome. Nice to meet Welcome. you. Welcome. Um, so I guess my question, I was going to ask about what you think of Xbox going into 2018, because they took a serious hit with Nintendo Switch in 2017. But we're just going to skip over that. Uh, best written character from your favorite game? Ooh. <laughs> Garrus. Well, it's Mass Effect. Mass Effect's my favorite game. So, so my favorite <laughs> game is Deadly Premonition. <laughs> Uh, which, if anyone has played it, is a garbage game for terrible people. Uh, the <laughs> best written character is none of them. Just none of them. That's what I'll say. My favorite game. I the mean, guy who speaks in rhymes. Yeah. Technically, my favorite game is Banjo Kazooie, and those those bears uh -huh. and birds don't speak the real language. Uh, I w uh, Ma Manny from uh, Grim Fandango. Yeah. yeah. Now I was gonna say, now I'm gonna say Guybrush Threepwood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from yeah the classic. I mean Ron Gilbert, Tim Schafer. That was that was. Uh, it's tough to have better writing than that. Um, You're Wheatley. not allowed to say Lee. Oh, Wheatley. Oh, Wheatley. Yeah. I yeah. thought you were going to say Lee in Walking Dead Episode 4, and I was like, I <laughs> that's, that's nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
No, Wheat, like, I, Wheatley was, was, was just brilliant. Brilliantly written, brilliantly performed, just, uh, just an all round. Woo! See what I did yeah. there? All round. Yeah. All round great character. <laughs> it's a circle. Yeah. Yeah. Man's a circle. Destin. Thanks, Paris. Oh, I said Garris. Yeah. Garris oh, you said Garris really quickly. Thank you very much. Wait, Paris. what's your favorite? My favorite? Yeah. Mark Hamill's Joker in Arkham Asylum. Very oh. good. Solid. Yeah. solid. Incredibly solid. Good yeah. Thank you. Hi, Greg. Greg. What's up, Greg? Hi. I know you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, what, I'm curious. Uh, so far, in terms of first-party games coming out this year for Xbox, it seems like all there is so far is Sea of Thieves. There's, it seems like most of the other really anticipated games are third-party. What do you expect that maybe hasn't been announced yet in terms of first-party games for Xbox? I mean, I personally think E3 is going to, I think Microsoft's going to go, like, gloves off. I, th I legit, like, we did a prediction in this episode this week, but I... Perfect Dark. Yeah, I honestly yeah. could totally see Perfect Dark. I could see a new Fable. Splinter I could Cell. see Splinter Cell, a couple new IPs. Oh, like, yeah. I really do think, because we know uh, Sea of Thieves will be out before E3. They're maybe State of Decay will. Maybe State of Decay gets, like, a May release. They had said spring. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then we have Crackdown... Later for the fall the yeah. question mark question mark <laughs> question mark uh but no i think this is the year where like how sony did a couple years ago we get a slate of what we're going to be playing in 2018 19 and 20. yeah and i mean then, phil has said many times in 2017 that they're working on exclusives and they've heard the people that want that so they've been making that choice in 2017 to do the cancellations the tough ones and i think they've been saving up i thought they were gonna do it last year but I mean, it just gives them even more ammunition in 2018. Yeah, there's uh, there's sort of a couple of camps in here. I'm very much in the Halo 6 will be out this year. You know, people are saying, well, but they haven't shown anything, and they always show like a teaser the year before. It's like, well, they've. Well, did, uh, someone from 343 also said something along the lines of like, we're working on something. It, it no, was, not that. That thing. was so yeah. vague, it though. Is very vague. I, yeah. So I still think this is going to be the year. I mean, if it's not, so be it. There'll be. Ori and the Will of the Wisps. There'll be State of Decay 2. Yeah. There'll be Sea of Thieves. Uh, no uh, there'll be Gary's a writing uh, Fable 4. Fable right. Four. <laughs> yeah, which will be yeah. done this yeah. year. Probably About the like, car. Uh, Forza they, Horizon 4. Forza Horizon. Yeah, I'm actually, so. this year actually really isn't that bad. Um, it's that we had delays last year, so it looked that way, I suppose. But yeah, yeah. I'm actually not concerned. I think yeah. that it's going to be a good year. That's where we, I think that's where I see it. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. All right, our last two folks here. Hi again. Hey, how's it going? Uh, so I just wanted to end on like a fun kind of question. So in like a generation that's kind of been defined by the uh, games as a service and uh, things like that, what, and excluding Nintendo, because I feel like we're all just going to say Mario and Zelda, uh, since 2013, what are your like generation defining games thus far? Hmm. Since 2013? So th just, yeah, so, this so, generation. So, so since Xbox and PlayStation uh, Inside, launched. no question. Absolutely, the best game of this entire generation, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, are we talking exclusives or anything? You just like what, what, anything. what defines it for you, like the last couple of years? Uh, I mean, Destiny for me. I think it was, and not just because it's a game that I play a lot, because it kind of made people realize that the console can have that sort of property that works really well. And I think yeah. if I just had to pick one, it would probably be The Witcher Three. Good choice. Yeah. Yeah. If I. Uh, um, my top three keep swapping around, but it would be uh, The Witness, uh, Sunset Overdrive, and Bloodborne. Mm. All strong. Mm -hmm. I would um, any any platform, right? Regardless sure. of platform. Yeah. Uh, I would I would say in terms of and everyone's definition is different, but the way I interpret your question is like, what are the games that had the most memorably profound emotional impact on me, and the ones that made me think like this is this is video gaming like at its highest expression of, of artistry. Inside yeah. and Journey. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, jo I mean Journey. Also I Zelda. Guess, wait, yeah, is that last? That's PS3. But also got re. It got reissued yeah. on PS4. Wait, when did it come out? We'll give you a pass. Uh, Journey was 2012. our 2012 game. Of the oh, year. so I'm just coming. You didn't let me squeak it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Will you allow it? Will you allow? I, I'll allow it. We can still say GTA. Jour I mean, Journey is an all timer. Yeah. It's an all timer. Yes, great. completely agree. Mm -hmm. Alana, what are your thoughts? I don't like it as much as other people. She what? said that to me for the first time a couple hours ago, and it made me question. You don't like friendship. Journey as much as other people? Yeah. Okay. But you, but you, you like, like it? I like it. Okay. Just not as but you sit next to me, who like cries when I play it. Yeah, I don't. I like the parts where you do the sands. I think that's cool. <laughs> the whole <laughs> game is the parts where you do the sands. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. You got it. All right. Our, our final Hello. question. Hi. Hi. How Hi, what's are your you? Name? My name is Valerie. Welcome. And I'm from Russia. 
Yeah. Were you from Russia? I'm from yeah. Russia. That's so much better than San Francisco. Uh. <laughs> well, in terms of like the great grand scheme of. That's why I'm the um, last one, but not least. <laughs> and um, first of all, I w because I'm uh, last one, I want to say thank you so much for having us here and cover all the questions that you have. And my last question will be like, what the funny story uh, uh, happened with you in uh, this industry? Because I know this is a great opportunity to work. Uh, and this is uh, probably the best place to work. Um, and um, what the, like, yeah, maybe the funny story at, at work, or maybe funny story when you, um, uh, I don't know, playing the game or something. <laughs> Oh, there's, yeah, this could go on all night. <laughs> I but, started uh, laughing because I'm like, which one can I see? Yeah, well, I was yeah. Like, literally like, yeah. oh, some of these are just not who wants to suitable go for work. Quick, I, wants I have to a pretty quick, safe sorry. one. Okay. Uh, just going to E3, often you sign up for hotel rooms, and then they're unexpectedly terrible. <laughs> so, like, getting into a hotel room, and literally the bed is so close to the bathroom that you, like, step out of the bed into the shower. <laughs> Was that so the, like, was that the like, like weird Ritz Milner? Hotel? Ritz Milner. Don't stay in the yeah, Ritz Milner. <laughs> this episode is sponsored yeah. by the historic Ritz Milner, <laughs> which, if you Google yeah. Ritz Milner LA, the first autocorrect is haunted. <laughs> so that's real. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, you got any good, good um, stories from over the years? That are you know what? It just occurs to me this. Okay, so you'll, you, maybe you'll, you'll like this one in particular. I remember being at one of my first E3s, and I've been doing, I've been in the business since 88, so I've met everyone that, you know, all, all the kind of the people that you, you think of like as the big game developer. It's going to be a World like of totally Tanks story. What's that? Is this going to be a World of Tanks story? <laughs> <laughs> why, why would it be like about World of Tanks? No reason. Anyway, continue. <laughs> okay. Wait, what? <laughs> um, I'd been, I, I, by, that, by this point, I'd been in the game industry long enough to have, to have met like a lot of my, the people that I considered my, my heroes, but not every, every single person. And I was at E3 one time and I was at the Microsoft, I can't remember what year this was, but I was at E3. May even have been CES when the, when that was still a games show before yeah. E3 came in. And I was on the Microsoft booth, and um, the person that I was there with uh, uh, introduced me to someone, and uh, and he said, uh, "Gary, this is Alexei Pajitnov," and I just <laughs> fucking lost it. And I, I like, the first time, the only time in my life I've been legitimately tongue-tied. I was like, because that is one of, again, want to talk about Greater all time. It's one of the true, yeah. true monuments of video game excellence and design and just genius. And it was the only time ever in my life that I had been that I was like literally was going blah blah blah, but I couldn't talk to the guy. And he's the nice. He's like, oh, he's just the, he's like the like the Santa Claus of video games. It's this nice kind of rotund, avuncular beard. He's just the <laughs> nicest guy. And and it was the only time. This is not that funny a story, but it's something that I remember. I just I was just completely just stymied in his presence. My God, I'm, this is this guy is a true legend. And I was just completely. Stein, you know, I was just absolutely tongue-tied. I agree, Alana, that no game is perfect, but Tetris comes pretty, yeah, pretty damn yeah. close. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty damn close. It's not even close. So where's the floor? Where's the floor in Tetris? There isn't. There's the one the song. The block that looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a garbage block. Get that block out of the game. Uh, uh, the one I've told before is uh, being trapped against my will on the floor <laughs> of the uh, USC, what's the name of it? Whatever. Galen Center? The, Yankee, the Galen Center God. for the Connect reveal it was a Cirque du Soleil thing some of you guys may remember this uh, and they as, as you're going in everybody is handed uh, what became known as the space ponchos which were these white tarps that you put over your head and they had these uh, shoulder pads that were going to light up during the Cirque du Soleil show and uh, you were just you were just uh, funneled into one area and had no say in it so some people got seats I was stuck on the floor and we just had to stand there for four hours uh, b before the event and then during it. And uh, they wouldn't let you leave, except uh, it must have been like for Ninja Gaiden 2, maybe. Tomonobu mm -hmm. Itagaki was there, who's, you know, uh, almost like a rock star game developer personified. Had long hair, the leather jacket, the su wears sunglasses indoors. Cool as heck guy, uh, and obviously crazy talented. And he came in, and the, I, I remember I looked over. He was and uh, I was with the, my my coworkers at the time, and he gets the space poncho, puts it on, and then like sort of looks around, and then he just he just leaves. He just he, just, <laughs> he managed to just nope out of that somehow. While the rest of us were trapped there, so I always love uh, even though it was like a, a traumatizing I industry event. 
I, I did get a good story out of the out of the Connect Cirque du Soleil thing, the space <laughs> poncho. Uh, I have no idea if anyone's going to find this funny, but I'm bringing it up because we make jokes about it quite often. Uh, I'm not going to name any names or tell you who the publisher was or anything like that, but a uh, bunch of us were playing this multiplayer game. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm going with this? I know exactly where I'm going with this. Uh, so we're playing this multiplayer game, but the servers aren't online, so we had to play with um, <laughs> uh, developers. And uh, the guy, the PR guy who's in the room explaining like who the other people that we're playing with are who aren't in the room on the server, uh, goes, so this is Dave. Uh, he's the level designer. This is this person, a narrative designer. And this is Sam. She's a woman. And that's all he <laughs> says. <laughs> that's it. But then the we two just, of us are sitting there. There was a moment where we just immediately look at each other. And it was like the, <laughs> like the office. We're like, oh no, what's so happening no here? Heard it and the two of us just died <laughs> laughing. It was like, he's just like, and she's a woman. And then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it was very good. I, I can't. I'm totally not going to say who that was, but I still find it funny to this day. That was. That, that, it was very good. That's top tier. Um, <laughs> we were, take us home, Marty. Uh, it was funny. I, I have legitimately countless stories the last uh, seven years, but I'm not legitimately countless because you probably can. seven years of stories. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we were talking earlier about CES, and we mentioned I thought about uh, telling this one. Uh, we went to CES a couple of years ago, and uh, we had to cover it. That was like shortly after you started, so it was like 20, CS 2015. Yep. Uh, and CS is a tough show because there's not a ton of video games there. And so when we do send a full force there, we have to sort of think outside the box and be like, let's find weird robots. Oh, this vacuum cleaner can fall in love with you. Let's talk to him <laughs> or her. I'm wondering which of the, the CES stories from that year you're going for. Uh, like five of them. <laughs> we went to, I'm going to tell okay. the one that we can never publish on IGN because we went and saw virtual reality porn uh, oh. at the, uh, it was like the, a penthouse in the Cosmopolitan. And the two of us went with, uh, it was Altano and Zach Ryan and Malk, were you there? Yeah. Oh yeah, Malk was there. That boy saw that porn with us. But anyway, so we we don't know what's happening here, but we're like, I feel like this is a headline for the site. And so we show up with there's there's five of us and we have a camera on a tripod. And there's, and there's someone who is clearly a porn star who is like serving drinks. But we're like figuring out how who knocks on the door and what happens when yeah. the door opens and we're like, We're here for the porn. Uh oh. And then <laughs> uh, but we went in and it was like a really nice, like a like a gorgeous loft, and it was very like professional, and it was clearly everyone well, had, was in suits. They had like great cheese. Yeah, they had amazing. Alana had hummus for the first the time in her life. That's very, very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then I we did give more context. Like you're sitting on the couch and you're just like, okay, all my friends are in this room. Let me just watch porn for a bit, and then you put on this headset, and there was a part where Zach Ryan, who's one of our producers, was like blowing on Marty while he's got the headset. He was like blowing <laughs> my ear. <laughs> But then we were like, uh, like, uh, yeah. Well, it wasn't great. I think we, a bunch of us, just like kind of like put our hand on Brian. <laughs> I put my hand on Brian's leg. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, but then we went to film a conversation outside of it. And that was the CS. Like you had a pneumonia. Yeah. We were all exhausted. None of us wanted to be in Vegas because spoilers, Vegas is the uh, bad city. It's uh, also so, none of us are experienced in covering porn. So how did I've we do never that? I've written zero porns. Yeah. Uh, but then we filmed the conversation of Brian and I explaining our thoughts on VR porn, <laughs> and that can never go on. And out the rest again. of us are cackling, laughing. <laughs> in the background the whole time while they're trying to talk about this experience in an authentic way that was just a complete mess. We were trying to like because how critically cover it? VR porn like we would be like, this is what I think of the first hour of the new Call of Duty. <laughs> and Brian was just like, the woman was so big! I was going to say that. I remember you guys talking about the perspective thing. There's this weird perspective issue that happened with VR porn back then where any... <laughs> The person back then, it was fixed just now. It was scaling they correctly. They just look like a mountain. They do. It looks like an Amazonia. It's very terrifying. Yeah. I do not recommend and you're like it. You're trying to explain this, and we're just laughing in the background. And I, th I think we sent it like back here to be like, "Hey, can we publish this?" And they're like, "Obviously not. <laughs> Never." Yeah. Apparently, someone still does have it on the desk. Yeah. But anyways, uh, all of us went to college and got real degrees, and that was a thing that happened. <laughs> so there you go. Well, uh, Valerie, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Not for just United States, for the world because I'm represented one of the countries that's uh, blessed to have uh, this company and so much great uh, games. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Oh. Thank you uh, all. Guys, thank you all so much for coming. Appreciate you supporting Unlocked and, and supporting IGN on all the places we are, Twitter, Facebook, IGN.com, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're you know we're here because we love it obviously, uh, and just thank you so much for taking your Friday night and making the trip up here and 
And uh, we just really appreciate it always. Yeah. So thank you all so much. Absolutely. Can I just try an experiment real quick? Can everyone just yell what they think Game of the Year is going to be this year? Wait. All right. I want you to think, think about, about it what for a second. you think Game of the Year this year is going to be. And then I'm going to do a countdown from three, and you're all going to yell it at the same time, and we're going to see what the consensus is. Wait, is it going to be three, two, one, go, and they scream at go? It's going to be, we're going to do three, two, one, and then they're going to go. They're going to scream at one? No, you're overthinking it. Three, two, one. Red Dead Redemption 2. It's Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> it's total, what? <laughs> it's I, definitely Red Dead Redemption. I, I don't know. What I heard a human say Spider-Man. Oh, okay. All right. I think I, I had a that was such a nice outro, and now I don't even know what to do. I don't know how to. I don't know how to do it. Anyway, see ya. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs>